kicking the door, waving the 4-4 on Morphomatic Cast, bringing you greatness this season, this year, actually. Uh, so, so how's it going, Prime, in this new year, 2019? The Guten, Guten Tag, mein dude. Guten Tag, mein Fräuleins. So check this shit out right, though. Yeah. So I've, I've decided that 2019 is going to be my um, catch-all year because I'm so behind on so many toku shows, right? Mm-hmm. I figured I'm going to pull my big boy pants on and get her done. And so far, I've managed to clear mm-hmm. uh, X-Aid, Q-Ranger. Oh, nice. Ooh. Yeah. And I've gotten I've gotten a hold of, I think, all of Build. I got to go back and double check. I got the Q-Ranger versus Gavin movie coming up to watch. And I have the, um, the last X-Aid OVA, I believe. Then I'm going to do some hunting to see where and how I can watch uh, Ultraman Ruby. And so you, uh, all, so you want all the smoke, apparently. I'm, I'm doing it all. And and, and because uh, we're being to, I guess I have to finally watch all of Ninja Steel. Uh, <laughs> I like how so, that, 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 so the that's specter happened. of Ninja Steel is just waving over your head. Meanwhile, I got that shit over with. Like a month ago. <laughs> so. Well, see, you 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 pulled the band out. You pulled the band aid. I'm over here bullshitting. Um, I'm behind on so much shit, dude. Like, if I were to show you a, a picture of my um my queue, and I'm that's like sure you know books a, and DVDs a, and Blu-rays uh, and shit. It's probably a uh, Microsoft Excel document levels of a lot, probably. <laughs> it is a it is a fucking cork board with strings connected to this, that, and the other. And on top of this shit, do you know I'm still behind on the Marvel Netflix shows? Like, I'm on episode five of season two, Luke Cage. Yeah, that's funny, because I think I hit you up about Iron Fist, and he was like, yeah, dude, um, I'm behind. I was like, damn. And then, like, I just got, because um, if you listen to the show, uh, people, I just, me and Sam just did our review. Not a spoiler review, but I haven't done, like, spoiler discussion of uh, Punisher season two. Reviews out now. Uh, drops this Friday. Great season, oh, just like the first one. If you like the first it. one, you like the second one. They and you know what? I'm not even it. that big of a. I'm not even that big of a Punisher dude, but I really like uh, Burnthal as Punisher. Oh yeah, I would say all of us, and I'll put myself in that category. I don't know about you. I don't want to put you in that category, but like a lot of folks thought, man, how are they gonna do a Punisher series? It's gonna be him just shooting up people all the time. And then you watch yes. the show and it's like, <laughs> oh, it's just they actually did some characterization for everybody. Huh. And in season two, it's the same thing. So it's like, oh, okay. You got some great characterization spliced in with some violence. I'm, I'm with it. <laughs> and, you know, maybe maybe my bar is a little lower than most people or people who are, you know, just really hard to the paint for the Punisher. But, like, my bar is basically just, can I see Frank Franking motherfuckers? I'm sorry, Frank mother Franking frankers it works. for a half hour it works that, that, i'll watch that <laughs> yeah it definitely works um yeah so i guess you know we, we, we're not the marvel show this is the more and uh as with anything um so i think as i pointed out in the commentary briefly um my christmas was pretty fruitful with some uh Stuff from uh, Earth Entertainment with Power Ranger S stuff. I got the uh, Green Ranger helmet and the uh, Zeonizer for a pretty good deal. Um, I'm I'm glad I'm glad you guys didn't tell me that. That was no because a lot William, of people... William hit us both <laughs> up at the last minute, and I jumped on it while I was at work, and I was like, "Fuck it, let me go and get it. Might as well." <laughs> see, and I'm glad I didn't see it when he sent it because if I did, I would have gotten it, and a whole lot of people would have had really sad Christmases. So. <laughs> I think you said that you had to take care of some uh, family stuff at the same time. So you was like, yeah, I kind of missed out on that. I was like, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I would have I took that. I would have made it work, now, you know. Yeah. But My uh, my, my monthly budget is nothing if not a Jenga tower. <laughs> and I'm trying not to see how it's standing, still standing. So Yeah, I lucked out, man. So, I mean, I was I was pretty happy. That was like a happy, happy Merry Christmas to myself. Um, that's on top yeah, of Yeah, treat yourself. Yeah, it was cheap to myself, and all that's. I mean, it was it was cool because it balanced out. Because what I spent, my girl gave me basically. Both of us kind of gifted our gifted each other uh, gift cards. Because I mean, when you're an adult, you get to a point where you don't know what to get the other person. So, gift cards is like the best option because it's like, hey, 
I don't know what you want. You don't know what I want, but give me money and I'll figure it out from there. And it worked out for both parties. You know, me and the woman, we've had this discussion about, you know, the whole gift card thing. She's, yeah. She doesn't have a problem with it. Yeah. Um, in certain cases, I, I kind of do. For birthdays, like, I'm pretty I good at, like, you know. I will say that. Birthday special, yeah. Christmas gift cards because mm. I don't know what you want. I don't, I don't, I don't know, dude. I don't know, dude. I don't, maybe, maybe it's just my, maybe it's just me. But like, I'm pretty good at sussing out what people want just by observation and conversation. But see, my girl's like, picky, um, so it's it's kind of like I. Last time I tried to like, well, take the initiative. She appreciated, but at the same time, she's like, "Hey, I appreciate the initiative, but you know, I really like this." And it's like, "Well, fuck." And she's like, "No, no, no, no. Don't get mad. I'm just saying I appreciate you went above and beyond, but." Gift card for Christmas. I was like, all right, cool. Well, see, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know because I'm, I, I, I'm knock on wood. I like to think I'm a clever bastard. Um, so, like, for example, this year I got my mom's uh, um, a, a expensive coffee maker because the last time I was over at her place, I mean, my mom's a real big coffee drinker. Mm-hmm. And the last time I was at her house, I thought she had some rinky dink um, little, Mc, not even McDonald's, but like fucking this tiny ass, like, old time be like i'm actually didn't have to hold it over an open flame to get coffee made <laughs> so um got this huge big ass like i forget the brand name but like it's this huge stainless steel 20 servings coffee uh maker and she really liked that she's like how did you know i wanted that how, how did you know i needed one i'm like what well, observation and i know who you are <laughs> and my um my woman i play fucking Columbo, going around the house seeing things like what is she low on what does she need what if she just made a prep passing, you know, just like, oh, I wish I had, you know, the, you know, it's, just, it's, it's it's a game. Like, I do, like you said, I do have an expel sales cheat when I'm ob- observing people and making notes about things they've said or done. So, I mean, you know, for a birthday, I, I tend to do what you do, pull a Columbo and be like, what does she really need? And then I just kind of surmise from there. It's like, it's weird. I look out on the, on a birthday only because maybe because I like I plot it out like months in advance. So I kind of figure it out. And then, and then pray to God that she doesn't buy anything to sit. Like, I think I got a purse last time for her because she really needed a purse. And I was like, all right, how do you ask her what type of purse she likes without overtly saying you're going to get said thing? So it's like, I have to figure out ways of trying to do that. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. Right well, see, now. Your, your, your girl, your girl sounds like, sounds like me because my, the woman tells me a lot of times, like when she buys me things, she has to make sure I didn't buy it already or she has to buy oh, yeah, it before yeah. she, I buy she, it. She gets mad at me because I was like, I think last time that happened, I had Ninja Gaiden already and she went to GameStop and got me Ninja Gaiden and Dead Space. So I was like, all right, thank you for Dead Space. I've been wanting to get this game. Appreciate it. Already got Ninja Gaiden. She's like, she, you always get all the games. I'm like, but. But see, it was like in the $5 bin at GameStop, and like I had to get it. So so it was like a 50-50 on that one. But she, she's she gotten better on that end because she'll like – she got me Gundam Versus. So I was like Ooh, we got happy. Oh, we got to play, doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep saying I need to, and it's just other games just pop up. So I definitely need to be proactive on that front. Yeah, because I'm trying to um get through that last um story duo mission. Ah, okay. But, yeah, for what for whatever reason, like me and my, me and the boys, we get to like that last chunk, and the wing guys, we just like put push our shit completely in. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, um, since we're we're talking Power Ranger s stuff, uh, so, um, apparently, uh, Premium Bandai, because you know we we've constantly talked about the amazing stuff that they've put out. Um, they're coming out with the uh, Kamen Rider Blade uh, buckle. So they're doing the complete selection? Uh, standard set, and it includes the uh, buckle, absorber, and blades uh, weapon, the uh, blade, rouser, blade rouser. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, they're pretty good. Um, I'm still trying to get the um, Gavin sword for a good price. That's not going to break my pockets. <laughs> the search continues on that. that. <laughs> the search continues on that. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, very, very much good luck. Um, so there's that. Uh, I think uh, 2019 is the year that we're all looking at Hasbro. Like, hey, Hasbro, we're, we're, we're ready as fans to see what you're going to bring to the table here on these toys. All I'm saying is just show me a picture of what the Shadow Ranger looks like from the Lightning Collection. That's all I ask. <sighs> what does it look like? I mean... Since since Bandai's been blue balling me for years, 
<laughs> got to get my I got to get my doggy fix somewhere. That's putting it lightly there, Brian, on the blue ball. <laughs> I mean, when does Bandai not blue ball the fan base? If you want to be real about it. Well, speaking of, you see that post they made about like the last legacy um, legacy collection figures that are coming out, and I'm kind of mad. I'm not mad. No, no, no. I'm mad. Psycho I mean, Rangers I'm, the I'm Lady pissed. Psycho Rangers, to which I'm yeah. like. Is there a way I so, could probably get those Psycho Rangers and get somebody to repaint them pink and yellow just for a collection? Purposes? Well, see, no, no, because then that's the that's the guy body. So like, it's the Psycho Ranger, it's the yellow Donald Thunder Ranger. Mm-hmm. I'm missing some. Okay, so she's out, and I'm 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 blanking out somebody else because I'm trying to visualize the the post the picture they had up, and there's also the Green Dragon Ranger. No disrespect, Tommy. Why are you in this wave? Well, the Green Ranger again? Didn't it come out with that already? I I think so. I think he's in this. Talking about I Bandai might be mistaken. Hasbro. I'm talking about Bandai Hasbro. Uh, Bandai. Yeah, the Legacy Collection. Yeah, the Legacy. The last figures, wave. Yeah, the la- he was in the initial wave that came out with red and green. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. That's why I'm like, Tommy, why are you in this assortment? And then another thing. So is this, this is Tommy why I'm mad. Without so, the Sword of Darkness, I'm, I'm... it looks like he comes with the Sword of Darkness. And then why would you release him with? I was going to say, if it was Tommy without the, the Sword of Darkness, why would you release Tommy without the Sword of Darkness? But then I went, wait a minute, this is Bandai. Questionable decisions all around. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah oh, here's why I'm at. Here's yeah. why I'm at. Mm-hmm. So, you wait this long to release the Soccer Rangers, right? Mm-hmm. Before you even came out with the base Soccer Rangers, you decide to come out with an A, a comic exclusive soccer ranger, and B, soccer a soccer soul. ranger that was only used as a ploy, yeah, to trick the other soccer rangers. So, what the fuck? I mean, it's like before you release the girl, five, it's like I got five rangers, but not the two girls that actually had a lot of characterization more than the other two. Were actually, actually integral to the whole oh, arc of the cycle. And, and, and if you don't even release Psycho Yellow, at least release Psycho fucking pink man come on give me one of them and i can just spray paint the other yellow and then we'll figure it out the rest from there you know (laughs) come on dog the fact i probably have to find somebody that did a custom version of it is just sad that's 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 the ridiculous part of it so jeez you're fucking up (sighs) it it is what it is What, what can you do like i said hopefully hasbro doesn't make the same mistakes because Dear Lagor, dear God, we don't need these kind of these kind of things happening. We really don't. I, um, I don't know. I'm um, trepidation. We'll see. Yeah. Um, heads up, folks. Um, we, me and Prime, will probably um, talk about that uh, Power Rangers visual history book because I'm like a eh, quarter way through it so far and stuff. Cause I've been like slowly kind of reading and going through it and stuff. It's a good read. I, I will say that it's a it's a very good read. I don't know. I, th- I haven't sat down and actually like read it. Read it. I like I said. I've been just thumbing through it. Um, well, I just got to Z- I just pictures. got the Zio in it, so it's like that's how much I've been like slowly kind of going through it and reading it and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, just a quick question: since you've probably read a lot more than I have, yeah. Um, do we get any interesting like behind the scenes tidbits? Any delicious? Um drama just say just say yay or nay don't don't give any details uh no drama but more like in depth on the production cycle of how like kind of like behind the scenes and the moving parts of certain things that were happening in terms of the stunts the locations and some of the people like david felding in particular when he was uh zordon like what he had to go through the process of him being in the green screen basically 24 seven throughout the whole time on power Rangers and stuff, which is actually pretty funny. Um, and just certain things, certain pictures that you get from certain episodes and stuff. So it was just, it was, it's actually, it's actually interesting. They even to the point to where I think in one of the pages, they actually have like the script for like the call sheet for like the Rangers when they come in, like literally like, you know, six AM they're in and they're starting to film. Hmm. You know, things like that. So and just all the monster suits and what they did going into season two and also the idea of Tommy and that goddamn shield. <laughs> oh man. Jeez. 
telling you folks, man, that that's one of those days where we always talk about Saban being cheap. That was de facto numero uno on that shit. I was like, what the fuck? Like, didn't even attempt. Didn't even try. Yeah, you Disney know. came in and was like, oh, no, nah, we're going to actually make the actual shield shield like in the Sentai when we bring back Tommy. And I was like, oh, well, of course, because it's Disney. They care. Just a bit. But did they, though? But did they, though? They cared until they got the Marvel license. I'll say that much. <laughs> fucking Disney. All right. Um... <laughs> it's <a> fucking Disney. <laughs> Like I don't, don't give me like, start tonight, fucking Disney. Fuck, fucking Disney. <laughs> don't give me start tonight, man. please don't. <laughs> no, nah, um, and also, uh, um, um, Beast Morphers. You know, it's it's coming along pretty great. Um, I'm interested to Did see. Did you it. see that behind the scene? That behind the scenes photo that had the Red Ranger and what and what looked like a uh, new original armor. Yeah, yeah, we haven't had that since uh, Jungle Fury. Well, no, no, no. We well, added, we well, added no. in Super Ninja, yeah. Super 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 um, Super Samurai. We did have that, so yeah, yeah. We do, yeah. We do have the um the the, the cockpit suits, and that's what it, that's what it looked like it would be. But he's on the ground, so we're all like, hmm. But see, that's weird. Interesting, considering the fact that you know, in in Go Busters, they are basically cockpits are traditional like Power Rangers, where they're controlling it normally. It ain't like, hey, we're standing mm-hmm. and holding something. It's like, no, they're yeah. Yeah, I can see why they changed the cockpits in um, Samurai and um, Dino Charge. Yeah. I don't see why they did it in Ninja Steel. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Let me take it back. I can see why they did it in Ninja Steel, Samurai, Dino Charge, because um, Samurai and Ninja Steel, those were some Japanese as fuck cockpits. Like, that was not going to fly in America. <laughs> oh, hell no. That that really, really not- wasn't and stuff. Oh, sad, sad note, um, Gogo Power Rangers uh, got nominated. This is something that was last year going into this year um gogo power rangers got nominated for best comic of 2018 and I it can fucking that. should it, it should fucking I- i'm should. glad they didn't sit there and say oh mighty Morphin from no 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 gogo was the shit like, gogo specifically because gogo was are you reading the current arc now when we're finding about how rita got the green power coin mm-hmm. it's, it's, great. it's so fucking good it's great it's it's, 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 it's everything i want from a power ranger comic book so did I tell you, I'm, I'm I'm done with the main book. Like I'm I'm in that. I'm yeah, because it's uh, what was I'm it? pulling the aren't, cord- they, aren't they basically doing the uh, Beyond the Grid kind of stuff with the main yeah. book anyway? Yeah, they. Yeah, they are, and I and I have you know it's. So here's my thing, CJ. So like the whole thing with Behind the Grid. So you've seen the the, the team that they assembled for the book, right? Yeah. Like those are the passengers, and they're trapped in this arc. They're trapped in this other dimension, and they're um fighting. They're um clashing against that uh great value Q, Q Ranger. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. They're trapped on Terra Venture, right? Yeah. But it's, uh, unless I misread something, or unless I need to go back and reread it, these are all the survivors from the battle against the end against Lord Draken. So it's and it's Terra Venture with the survivors from the end of the Lord Draken fight. But that if that's sense. the case, then yeah. But if that's the case, then they're like there are no civilians. It's all Power Rangers. Yeah, so like it's it's a Terra Venture filled with Power Rangers, but only a few of them can still morph. That's why we have the team as the lead of the main book. But there's just something about that it just doesn't sit well with me. If you know what I mean? Like if this is all the like, why are they all for lack of a better term, they're all acting bitch made and I can't get jeek with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't I don't know, it's just something that's like it's, it's just, it just doesn't sit well with me for some reason. Like I don't think the writer is handling the concept or exploring the concept fully as it should be explored. Does that, does that make sense? No, no, it makes it, make, it makes perfect sense because I got to play catch up with it anyway. Because you know I've been uh, it's, it's 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 not good, man. It's it's not. Um. So I guess uh, you know before this internet starts getting stupid with us and stuff, I guess we can dive into Common Rider Amazon's. Amazon so, writers. Yeah. Um, last time we were doing this, folks, um, uh, the internet was being stupid, and um, also some of the audio files kind of messed up a little bit. But this time around, we're actually going to go full tilt into all things Amazon season one, two, and the movie and such. The Last Judgment, um, which actually shocked me. Funny enough, uh, um, season two came out last year, and um, the movie came out. Uh, I think right around the late spring, twenty eighteen, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so spring 2018, I believe. 
Yeah, something like that. So, um, yeah, so you want to give people kind of like, I guess, a primer on Comrade or Amazons, you know, and stuff. Because just, just for a thing, folks, this does not have any correlation to none of the mainline TV show Comrade or Amazon shows at all. Nothing. It's its own separate entity. No, no, it's just... On continuity. So, do you want me to give a primer on the original Amazon or on Amazons? Uh, original, and then die. We can sprinkle that straight and segue that into Amazons. Okay, so the original Amazon, which Amazons with the S or a Z, I'm gonna say it's an S. I think it was, the, yeah. It was, yeah, I think it was Z. Yeah, I think it was, I want to. Yeah, say I think in the show. Yeah, I think in the show it's Z, but in the marketing it's S. Yeah. Anyway, so the original camera writer Amazon, which this is a, um, a loose adaptation, is well not loose adaptation, I'm sorry, which is a um, a modernized retelling. Or not, what's the word I'm looking for? Because it's not even that. It's just the con- it's some of the concept of, like done in a different kind of way. Mm-hmm. So the original camera writer Amazon is a show a show, and uh, a plane crashes in the Amazon, leaving um, the young Amazon, that's his name, stranded without his parents, and he's soon adopted by an Incan tribe. So he then is as Amazon, he becomes a wild child living off the land. However, his peaceful existence is completely uprooted when his village is attacked by the ten faced demon and he kills everyone in the village looking for what's called the G Amulet, which is an artifact which is told to hold unlimited or ultimate power. So from there, uh Amazon is um sent by the elder who then gives him a GG armlet. And performs an ancient magical ritual which combines science and magic because Tokusatsu. Mm-hmm. And he becomes Kamen Rider Amazon and he pursues the Tan Faced Demon and his organization to um, Japan. Alright. Pretty standard. And pretty standard. Pretty standard affair with Kamen Rider. Well, I don't want to say pretty standard because Kamen Rider Amazon is notorious well, or infamous, rather, I should say, of the fandom for being really um, bloody. I think what what's what's the mean we say Cameron Amazon is make cute noises to capitate monsters. Yeah, um, I, look for even even for the era it came out, there was some gore. It was like, yo, this dude's ripping arms off. Okay, shit, that's that's what's up. Yeah, he, <laughs> he was he was he was tearing into monsters with teeth, claw, fang, everything, all things, all day, every day. Yeah, um, and the it's, and yeah, it's just. The fights in Amazon were very distinctive because it's, it's a lot of blood splatter going on mm-hmm. in that show. Um, so, which takes us now to um, Kamen Rider Amazons, which is an Amazon Prime exclusive series both in Japan and in uh, North American territories. So, Amaz- so Amazons mm-hmm. is a story about a world... That is full with monsters called Amazons, which were released for by an experiment for the Nozuma Pharmaceutical Corporation. Yep. And what it is is that um, there was an accident in the lab many years ago, which developed these cells that turn people or creates cannibalistic monsters called called Amazons. Yep. And so our story picks up where we're following the son. Well, we first we, we first we think it's he's an, the adopted son. But the son of one of the Nozomi um, executives named Haruka, yeah. who has been quarantined and isolated in his home because he has Amazon sales. Yeah. So the show follows um, an, an Amazon. I'm sorry. So it's the show follows an Amazon extermination team hired by Nozomi, Noz, the pharmaceutical company, mm-hmm. to track and hunt down Amazons and kill them. And we pick up in season one. We find out that it was it four thousand Amazons. Yep. Have been released into the city, mm-hmm. and they are cannibals eating eating people left and right. And this leads into the show into what I say is some really, really grisly body horror shit going on. I'm, all right, so prime. Yeah, this. So one of the things that I notice about Common Rider Amazons is it kind of reminded it basically reminded me of the uh, the first two Common Rider movies, Common Rider the first and Common Rider next. Uh, did you get that feeling going in? Yeah, I totally got that feeling. In fact, wasn't it announced in a magazine when they were comparing or when they were talking about the first and the next? And like this is seen as like a spiritual continuation, quote unquote. I could see that given the world because um, I remember Otakon, no bullshit, Otakon 2005. I'm old. Um, they showed that 
and me being a person that I was kind of watching Kamen Rider a little bit, so I was like, this is interesting, this is new, and basically the Kamen Rider the first and Kamen Rider the next was kind of like the real world version of the Kamen Rider. It's a real world retelling of the Kamen Rider, the first two Kamen Riders. Well, kind of first three, first three series technically. Uh, no, first two, because uh, Ichigo and Nigo were in the same show. Okay. So, um, yeah, I can kind of see that, like, right around the time when it came out. I'm about to show, I'm about to show my age. Right around on, um, right around when it came out in M, we were, we, everybody was talking about it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were comparing it to saying, like, it's the, um, the Nolan, Nolanist take on the show of writers. I can and see I that. Mean, yeah, I, was, I can kind of see that. I mean, I don't agree with that sentiment, but like, I can see where the, where 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 you could draw that from. Yeah. Um, though they were very liberal, and I I use that term quite quite loosely, <laughs> with the elements that they adapted. Like mm-hmm. the running joke is, and I'm one of the perturbers because I think I'm I think I made a meme about it, where um I watched Cameron Rider the next. And what I was expected was Kamen Rider V3, but what I got was the grudge. I don't know how the fuck that happened, but you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know, I like I said, I enjoy both movies for what they were and stuff. Um, I gotta say, I'll say this for somebody like me watching those two movies, and like I wasn't really like knee deep in the Kamen Rider like I am now. It was kind of one of those. Well, that was interesting, and like. There was nothing in me that was like screaming betrayal or anything because I didn't have any connection to it. I was just like, oh, these are interesting movies for what they are and stuff. But like, I remember the message boards. Yes, kids, message boards. That's that's before Twitter. What, what are those, Grandpa CJ? <laughs> what are those? Message boards where everybody could, you know, voice grievances and, you know, and say racist shit. And at most, you just get booted off the message boards and you could probably create another fucking persona and nobody really cared, you know? And here's the thing about that, too. Back on message boards, see, it didn't spread as much because there weren't likes and retweets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, you so know. All, all that shit was isolated to one thread. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I think we, we talked about that at length on uh, the Beast Wars podcast and stuff, you know, which should be coming out soon. Uh, but, yeah, mess- message boards were a place. And um, if you were, I don't know, if pr- pr- promise, were you, were you on the Ranger board back in this days of 2005? I wasn't really on Ranger board. That wasn't my stomping grounds. I more hung around alt fan Power Rangers, the news set group, the news group. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah, I was a Ranger board lurker. I didn't necessarily was a person that was on the board like that and commenting. I just kind of lurked the board. So I, I was there during the early days of, hey man, this person actor is on the board. You gotta fuck be guys, be be cool. Don't don't get stupid. And then you always have that one or two. <laughs> I'm gonna say that get stupid. The always the always sunny title car and the guys were not cool and they were very <laughs> stupid. It's like this is why Amy Jo kind of took a distance from the fandom for a minute before she finally you know warmed back up. So you know. Blame message boards, guys. They, they they were definitely a haven of people being assholes. More so than Twitter now. That's why I'm like... We, we can come... are, you, are you implying that people online can be fucking assholes? Yes, How yes. Pashaw the, Pashaw the <laughs> thought, sir. How dare you? Oh, this is, I remember on Ranger Board, people... like It was mixed feelings about Kamen Rider first and next. And I was kind of like really looking at people that were really into Kamen Rider, and they were like, oh, it was all right, but it's just I have nitpicks because I'm in the com- I'm Kamen Rider fan number one. And I was like, oh, I guess if they're saying it's bad, I guess maybe it is bad. You I know, don't know. I just, I just enjoyed it me, for what it is. You know? Let me jump up on my soapbox here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as a person who is in, who is in the Kamen Rider, who was in the Kamen Rider at the time, yeah. uh, when I first saw the first, I thought, you know what? Not bad. It was a modern interpretation mm-hmm. of Kamen Rider because I, you know, I watched the show and I read the manga. Um, I thought it was fine. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I like I say, I equated like if we had like the holy trinity of adaptations, which would be the Adam West show, Batman the animated series, and the Nolan movies, just to give a comparison. Yeah, this would be like I say, the Nolan films. Yeah. Uh. Could have did a little more, little less with the love story, but for what it was at its core, yeah, that, that love story was kind of like, oh, that's where they're going with it. Exactly, exactly. Like <laughs> when, we, when they did that big reveal at the end, I was like, okay, I see what you were going with when you, when you were trying to humanize them. 
But I have no sympathy but, for him. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, I had <laughs> absolutely none whatsoever. So you get a camarada boot to your face, ladies. Lady like and you're <laughs> you're catching that kick strike psycho <laughs> is over cuz. <laughs> and I felt But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But anyway, I thought it's not bad. And so like the outrage that I saw mostly, like I said, I hung around the uh the AFPR group. Yeah. Um most of the most vocal people who were talking about it as being a disgrace, and this is this is from what I just saw at the time, were people who only knew Saban's Mass Writer and who only knew about Camera Rider from reading fucking not even not even wikias, but like fan pages and shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just like <laughs> Have you seen this show? Oh well no, but what I think is then shut the fuck up. Like, hold on, back it up. <laughs> Facts like it doesn't care about what you think or what you feel. Yeah, like this yeah. is like, just stop it. Just stop it. I mean, if you're going off mass rider, I feel bad for you, man. I, I mean, maybe I'm thankful that I had older cousins who were like, cause I think, you know, if you go back to early two thousands, you had to go to like certain pages that had the fucking real player videos of the fucking Japanese footage of some of these common writer shows. DJ, I'm gonna need you to stop out in our Woo! age. I'm gonna need you to stop telling on us right now. I can't help it, dude. I don't because even because know... I remember those damn Geo City sites, sir. And how dare you bring Man, back this flashback listen, bomb? I take it. I'll dare t- you, sir. Hey, look, look. I'll take it a step further to really show our age. You remember that fucking uh, that that second CD version of uh, Common Rider? What was it? Co? Uh, Hell yeah, I played that shit. <laughs> oh man, listen, the fucking kid in me was like, "What's this common writer? This is like mass writer, but gruesome. What is this?" And yeah, and then CJ, my, my, my younger self, just took off and just searched online on my fifty six k modem for more common writer stuff. <laughs> like, is this what it can be? Actually, decent fight sequences. I know, a right? Coherent, <laughs> a coherent story. What? Yeah, yes, me and me and Primus, we we went on those Geo Cities. Those were those were the dark ages. <laughs> oh man! Do you? I don't know. Do you remember the Ultraman FAQ? Man, listen, <laughs> listen, dude. You talk about me showing my age. I'm looking at you like dog, man. I got. We got to start busting out the discounts <laughs> discounts at fucking Denny's at this point. <laughs> Do you remember the fucking table outline and shit? <laughs> <laughs> so soon, soon, Prime. Soon, if we ever meet and we have kids, that's gonna be us. Like back in my day, kids, you didn't have it as easy as we did. And I'm so, fu- <laughs> I'm so, I'm fucking pissed off because I'm, I'm listening to this podcast on YouTube and this dude on it was talking about how his son is really big into Tokusatsu and it's like, oh yeah, my son's a big Godzilla fan and they watch Ultraman all the time on Country Roll. Do you know what the fuck I would have given to be able to have Ultraman in my fucking fingertips at a snap that they yeah, have I, right I, now? I had to go on bootleg VHSs from my cousins. That, that's I'm saying, the... I had to get, I had to get shit shipped from like Hawaii and fucking Japan. <laughs> you better hope the subs shit. are good, by the way. You better, you hope. better hope it's fucking subs. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, damn it. <laughs> Like sometimes I get Taylor to like, is it sub? Is it sub? Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Damn, nah, fuck. I'm the guy. I'm the guy who's older cousins. I did. I tell people all the time. Like I grew. I was in private school, so like I'm six years old. And my first anime, no bullshit, was Superbook. That was it. That was a. That was a, uh, a Tatsunoko property. People don't know. It was basically Japan saying, "Hey, let's make the Bible more fun." Which, as a kid, I'm like, how? Because the problem is very depressing. And somehow, you put a fucking robot that can take a group of kids back in the time to fucking Daniel in the Lions then, and you make it fun. It's like, well, damn. J- Japan made the Bible fun now. I don't know. Yeah, giant robots <laughs> anything. It's automatic. It gi- Dude, the Prime. It wasn't even giant robots. It was a robot. The kids, literally, no bullshit, folks. We'll get back to Common Rider in a minute. But the kids, what happened was the dad was an archaeologist. The robot did bad, built the robot because, of course, he does. And he had this Bible. The Bible somehow melded into the computer and went into the robot. And the kids, every episode, go back in time to different parts of the Bible. And I'm like, with the word of the Lord. <laughs> exactly. It's like, really? They're helping out David against the Goliath because of robot? I'm like, well, it was fun as a kid. And then after that, like, my cousins gave me, like, Gatcha Man on VHS. And I was like, this is awesome. And bear in mind, too, I was the person that loved G-Force, which 
Thank God Ted Turner, even though it was edited, it wasn't edited as much as Battle of the Planets. Or as much as fucking Eagle Riders. I'm side-eyeing you, Saban, you son of a... <sighs> see, see, that's a good segue, Primes. It always comes back to Saban. It always comes back to Saban. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Can't fucking he escape. Took, didn't he take fucking V2? Was it, um... This, was it, um, um he took Gotcha, gotcha Man, Man 2. Gotcha and he Man took, 2 and 3 was and that? combined it. Yeah. <laughs> That, what was that OVA? And I think he took three shows and, and slapped them yeah, in the one. He took the OVA. He took the OVA, and I was like, "Dude, how the fuck, man? How a, did you that even?" Was a fuck, man. It really was, man. Fucking, how did you, like, fuck, like it's? You think like you look back at like the first season of Ultron, right? When they were yeah. taking like dispersion elements from like um the three the three shows and making them into one. I'm like, well, this group of people from this show and this group from this show, fucking Saban's Eagle Riders. First of all, first, first of all, first. Of all, they're not all eagles, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds cool, Prime. That's how it goes. <laughs> First of all, I mean, I would have taken Flight Force over fucking Eagle Riders. Like, what the fuck? I ain't gonna lie, man. My, my, my kid self was just like, Eagle Riders, yeah! Because I'm part of the problem as a kid, clearly. <laughs> See, you're the reason why they ain't bought their ass with that Glitter but Force at the shit. Same time, but at the same time, I watch Eagle Force like, this isn't good as G-Force. So uh, it was a balance there. It was, at least it was a balance of this isn't as good. What is going on here? This splice footage here. I'm a kid and knows the splice footage. I know, it's right? Bad. Like animation doesn't match these two scenes. I remember I watched it once. My brother walked in the room and was like, "Why are you watching this bootleg ass Battle of the Planets?" <laughs> then all of a sudden you turn around. First off, sir, it ain't Battle of the Planets. <laughs> gotcha. Man. I'm like, first of all, you are gonna put respect on Gotcha Man's name in this household? <laughs> goddamn it. <laughs> well, we were resort to fisticuffs. And to be some consequences. Please leave that shit. All I'm saying is, folks, back in the days, you, until like YouTube and like a lot of tube sites pop, popping up, you were hard pressed to like find like common writer stuff. So I think like 05, which is probably like YouTube was around in 05, wasn't it? Like early, I think it was just mostly early. Cat, cat videos and gameplay walk in um, speed runs at that time. Yeah, so it's like, you know, you get common writer the next and stuff. And I think I actually, no bullshit, I actually did go back. Because I, I was in the Air Force at the time, I actually went back and downloaded it through uh, LimeWire. Ooh, ooh, God. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. You yes. take a minute, Moose, all today, Paul? Hey, hey, look, man, that was before Torrents became the thing. That was like the following year I got put on a. I got put on the torrent, so I learned my yeah, ways. For those, yeah, for those who don't know, LimeWire was like raw dog and internet with no condom. <sighs> just so you know. Hey, look, at least I didn't look for music. I looked for fucking videos. At least you didn't, you, you know, look for Kamen Rider stuff. You rolling the dice and you worked out pretty well for the most part. You know, it was there. But the, fo- the point is, when you look at Kamen Rider the first and next, and then you get to Amazon's, I think that's probably why I, like, I appreciate Amazon's for what they were doing, because it's like... Amazon's is raw as fuck. Like, like, let's get that straight right fucking now. Like, they... First episode... Well, Wild Me Out was the first episode, like Prime mentioned with the premise and stuff. The fact that the squad... You might as well call them the fucking Suicide Squad of Camarada Amazon's because... It's Basically! One, I mean, they got two people on their squad. One of them hid himself as an actual Amazon's, and they got another one that was the uh, mole. The mole Amazon. Mamaru. And, yeah. And they use him as kind of like, hey, if shit fucking gets bad, boom, bust this dude out, essentially. And when you see it, it threw me off when I first saw it. I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. They're fighting Amazons, but they have Amazons on their team. What is going on here? And that's essentially the whole thing of the show. Like, you have them hunting down all these Amazons, but you feel for the team because it's like while they're effective, it ends up becoming kind of a futile effort over the course of the season. You know, at least the first season. Second season, it's just they're kind of non-existent for the most part. You know. Mm-hmm. So it's just like... It, and even to the extent that like when one of the teammates ends up going feral because of it and he dies, it's like the head dude who, I'll be honest with you, he looks like he's constipated all the time even though he's angry. I yeah, mean, he, he's, he's had enough of all this shit. <laughs> oh, he's done. As soon as they gave the revelation that essentially... So we're just expendable, aren't we? Yeah. It's like basically <laughs> and especially after when that old home dude like ate his friend, like first of all, the dude who got eight, he took he, when you talk about taking one for the team, he took that shit in stride. Like he was like, Oh, you in Amazon? Oh fuck, you pouncing me? Oh fuck you eating me? Well I guess it's okay as long as it's you. 
I mean, listen, like, he came in there thinking he can do something, and it's like, nah, dog, you're not an Amazon. You're going to get fucking slung around, and he got eaten. And just the fact that they try to think that he can revive him, like, he, you know, you can't revive him, guys. He, he's, I he's, mean, done. he's done. I mean, he's flex tape. Flex tape is amazing, but it's not going to put that arm back on, Holmes. It's like duct tape. <laughs> that's it. Unless you got a phoenix down, that man's not coming back. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, and, and what made it, like, interesting is that one of the characters, like, uh, Jin, he's a common writer, Amazon Alpha. And what was thing about it is, is, so he was actually one of the scientists that essentially kind of sort of made the Amazon sales, sort of? Well, that's the thing. So, like, Jin, his whole thing um, is that... He was part of the experiment of the uh, the pharmaceutical company mm-hmm. that created the Amazon. Now, bear with me because I'm trying to remember if they actually ever explain what went down or if they just alluded to it. But the goal of this organization is, you know, g- generic, just general evil organization science shit. Because mm-hmm. I don't, I don't even really think they even really explain what was the end goal of the Amazon project, did they? Uh. Like I know we got I know we got the ultimate explanation for the movie, but that's that's what we'll that's get to the movie. Plan, like yeah, that's yeah. like continuously planned like Zeta. That was like the very last thing yeah. that they wanted to do. But like initially, like with the conversation between the CEO dude and uh, Tachibana and um, Haruka's mom. Spoilers, spoilers. Yeah. Haruka's mom. Yeah. Um, they talked about the Amazon project when they act where they air quotes accidentally released the sales that infected <laughs> or the I know right they went full fucking Umbrella Corporation in this I piece. know right one hundred percent even Umbrella be like y'all y'all fucking bugging y'all I mean, tripping like shit except 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 uh, the Nozama Pharmacy did not have a Wesker in their midst. I wish you they know, did. I wish they did. Honestly, Tachi Bana thanks. He's fucking uh, Wesker. Nah, he, he's <laughs> he he, thanks. He he's great value, Wesker. Let's be real about this. <laughs> he ain't even fucking great value. Like he's fucking. <laughs> See, I was giving a dime credit, like, store you. ass. <laughs> dime store Wesker. <laughs> he doesn't have sunglasses. He just has regular glasses. That's 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 where <laughs> we're at right now. <laughs> but them suits fresh as fuck though. I give him that. The motherfucking dress. I mean, look, look. Let's, like let's that, be real that, about that, this. That, that strike three suit he had on in season two, that shit was dope. I mean, let's I'd be real about this. Let's, let's be real about this. Evil corporations in all common rider shows have b- bomb ass suits. Let's be that's real true. about this. That's, that's just true. that's the attire. All right, it's, 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 it's universal for every common rider. Okay, I'm pretty sure they come in like a closet. Like, it's like the fucking. It's like MIB. Like as soon as you sign on, you get a closet full of suits, three piece suits. And I mean, look, homeboy from fucking the gum. Fucking uh, um, dude's brother, older brother and shit. They had that white oh, suit. Oh, like, Man, Ooh. listen, that white suit was fresh. Ooh. First of all, Takatora just fresh, just just fucking period. Like that motherfucker just smooth as shit. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So back back to Amazon. Back to Amazon. Yeah, so yeah. Jen, his whole thing is he he feels guilty about the Amazon experiment and the Amazons getting out and infecting people and eating people. So he's carrying all this guilt. And I gotta say, he is one of the best main camera writers in the show in a long time. One hundred percent because of his whole theses as local man too angry to die. Yeah, I mean, because Jen he has the Amazon sales, and the big secret is that essentially, like him, the way he's been controlling his Amazon sales is by virtue of him eating raw stuff, like he eats chicken a lot. Like even before he like he transforms, he eats like what two raw eggs or whatever. Two raw so, eggs, like none but protein, fucking monster. Yeah, and the protein basically kind of keeps the cells suppressed because that's kind of the secret for him. So when he transforms, like when you see him pop up on that truck beeping a horn, and he pops up as Amazon, like you know, as Alpha, I was like, oh shit, it's on. Like he makes short work, and the funny thing is that whole squad. The commando squad doesn't know what to make sense of it because they're like, so is he helping us or what's what's going on with this guy? Yeah, Jen's whole thing is he doesn't care how he accomplishes. He doesn't care what he does. He doesn't care who he screws over. His whole goal is I'm going to make sure that every single Amazon dies. And when they're all dead, then I'll kill myself because this mistake has to be rectified. Yeah. And then on the other side, you got Haruka who, bear in mind, uh, for people that are Amazons, they have uh, Amazon register bands. And the big thing was, it was there to kind of a control device that injects drugs to keep them suppressing it. The problem was, only last two years, because 
I, I gotta be honest with you. I think the pharmacy company is just dicks for that shit, to be quite honest. I'm you know? pretty sure, like, whatever the CEO fucking wanted. By the way, like, he is fucking quotable. He has some of the best quotes <laughs> in his damn show. <laughs> but, like, whatever the fuck he wanted, I really wish they had explained it. Because I'm like, did he, was it like he using the city as a testing ground for. It's gotta for, be, because when you look at all the. what, am- though? I mean, let's, let's, be real, let's be real about this. When you look at all the Amazon monsters that pop up, like, one of the big ones. Is this fucking was it uh, uh the, the the was it the B or Ant Queen? I think was it B Queen. It was the Ant Queen for the yeah, the Connolly Ants that two parter? A whole fu- you might as well say she had the fucking Nino Brown shit, the the, the fucking towers and shit from New Jack City. Yo, she had that shit. Oh fuck lock. that man! She was mama. She was like, <laughs> Amazons aren't the law. I'm the law, goddamn. Oh yeah, yeah. She had the whole building on lock like that. I gotta be real. I will say this about Amazon too. It's creepy at spots. It turns into like a bit of a scary movie at certain spots because. The Ant Queen in this shit, like she kills people. Like they're done. Like she, you know like, what? Not just not just her though. Like all Amazons, like they like some. This this show has some really gruesome body horror. Like some some haunting shit. Like her and fucking um the Amazon Gordon Ramsay in that Cannibal Cafe. Oof, man, or the fucking dentist in season two. What the fucking fuck? I mean, but those are people that essentially embraced the fact that they're Amazons to their extent. Like, cause it's like you even have, cause that was one of the big contentions for the first season was like, there are people that Amazons that are really like, yo, I don't want any trouble. I'm just trying to live a peaceful life. It's like, I just happen to sometimes crave human meat. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, and, and the thing of it is, it's like, it doesn't fucking matter. You gotta go. Yeah. And cause eventually like you can suppress it, but like the, one of the things of the show is like the hunger is going to overtake you sooner or later. Yeah, and I think Jen and even Haruka are probably the only two that really suppress it. And even when you get into, you know, Amazon New Omega and stuff, he's kind of like the one that kind of he could suppress his to an extent. But that's only because, you know, he's half half human, half Amazon. So there's that aspect to him and stuff. But we'll get to him because that's actually a pretty interesting dynamic with that guy. Oh, um, yeah. So it's like earlier on, it's like. The commandos essentially are just kind of fighting a feudal battle, especially once they get that realization of like where they kind of sit at on the food chain of hunting. Down <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, no pun intended. But like, it, it's like they get that kind of like notion because essentially they get money for every Amazon that they kill. Yeah, every armband that they secure and bring back, they get like a nice hefty fee, and they each have their own thing they want to do um the guy with the glasses for example uh was it fukuda yeah fukuda yeah he's taking care of his sick mom who's in the hospital Mm -hmm. with the money yeah and and, and it's like it gets to a point to where even the commandos are kind of sitting there like is the money worth it because i mean yeah essentially there's a lot of more quantity this question like these are still essentially people Mm -hmm. it's just that they have an affliction so do they, does that does that mean we have to, the right to hunt them down? But that also raises the question, does this give them the right to, the Amazons, the right to kill people? Because that's just the way they live. Like I say, the CEO guy, he brings up a lot of really good points in his um, flamboyant speeches that he gives. Not flamboyant, just um, ominous sure. speeches. Yeah. 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 Very very fucking ominous. Like he, yeah. you talk about a scene, sure, the fuck. <laughs> well, I mean, what was wild was that, I think, was it uh, Kazuya? What was wild about him was, like, he gets his arm eaten, and it was like, fuck it, give him a fucking prosthetic arm and keep him out there. I'm like, damn, like, really? Like, just give him a prosthetic arm, so what's he going to do? Like, y'all can't even hook him up with, like, a metal arm? Just got to give him a prosthetic one and just be like, keep hope alive? (laughs) Nah, straight wood, straight wood. And you see how he was slanging that shit around when he had to use that uh, assault rifle? Fuck, yo. I'm like, well, at least he got a a fucking, was it a steady or he keeps steady? I don't... I don't know, man. (laughs) No, but it's like with with Jen, like his character over time, he, I I guess, could you say he gets kind of obsessed, so to speak? You know, maybe just a tiny, tiny bit, you know, with the whole my body is falling apart, but I'm still going to hunt down Amazons and kill them because that's literally the only thing keeping him alive is his fucking hatred. Yeah. And, and well, well hate, we, hatred and shame, I would say, uh, it's equal measure. Yeah, and then you got Haruka, who, like, he's a character who, I believe he is, yeah, like you said, he's the son of the head of the pharmaceutical company and stuff, and this is which, one... Which, yeah, which, by the way, that was, like, a huge revelation, because at first they said he was adopted, mm-hmm. then, he, then he finds that he's an Amazon, so the mom 
she keeps him locked away in in her house, and she suppresses his Amazon urge. Well, not just his urge, but his the entire sales with the uh, injections and drugs. And so um, his sister, his ad- who we thought was his adopted sister, she would constantly visit him and say she feels bad, like they're keeping him locked away. And they had like this really elaborate, um, this really elaborate uh, metaphor with a qu- aquarium and keeping things trapped inside with him going on because he had a little empty Episode. aquarium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had a whole. That was like a whole fucking prevailing theme, and I really liked how they how they brought that back in the movie that about keeping things captured and letting them grow. But anyway, yeah. um, she keeps him subdued, subdued in the house until one day he decides, you know what? I don't want to fucking take those drugs anymore. And do you know the one day he decides to not take those drugs, he, the Amazon sales awaken and he spasses out and becomes um, Omega origin. Yeah. And which so, is like the raw form of it. Essentially, you know, it's not controlled. Which, yeah, and it's like looks looks. And I, I might be in the minority here, but I think it looks real fucking cool. It's like OG I'm, Amazon a little bit. Yeah, kind of, sort of like you know, a little like kind of like how Alpha looks has is inspired by the original Amazon. Yeah, and um, I like it more. Like I really like how he looks when he's just when he has with the the belt transformed on it. And I really wish they had made a toy of uh Omega Origin. Yeah, I mean, who do who do we have to talk to about that though? If you want, I'm to just saying, that. like, let's come on, guys. Like, it's basically it's basically Sigma. Like you get, you can just get paint it green. Anyway, yeah. And it, it's just a, another side tangent. Like, this, did it bother you as much as it bothered me watching the show? Whenever Omega like jump on a monster or like try to bite people, but like he doesn't have an opening mouth function. Like it's just that that solid face plate. So he'll be like just pecking pushing his it. head. It looks like yeah, pushing his head his on face. things. <laughs> like like why are you why are you head on the monster? I'm like why couldn't they give you a functioning mouth like they gave I mean, Alpha? Like I mean, what? That'd be a lot of money they would have to pay in considering. I don't look. I don't know how much Amazon like, Prime paid for Toei to you know do well, this and stuff. So most of the money from Amazon was, they was getting siphoned off from Ghost. So I don't know what to tell you. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Oh wow, I didn't know that. That's one of the reasons why Midway in production, like you know, Ghost kind of, for lack of a better term, fucking falls apart because they had they had the spread split production money with Amazon's. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and and the thing of it is, it's like, it didn't bother me. I got to be honest with you, if you want to be, be, be perfectly honest, it didn't bother me, but I I'm, I think I more so laughed at like, huh, he's just pecking at his head, but that's supposed to imply he's eating it. I mean, I think the sure. after effect of showing the blood or whatever around the mouth, it's like, oh, okay, I, I get the point that they're trying to make with that. I, yeah, I mean, I get the point, but like, it was kind of fucking funny to me. Like, I couldn't help but like laugh. <laughs> know, like, even the it's funny. Even, I the ain't Habiki, gonna laugh. <laughs> even the Habiki suit had a functioning mouth on it. Like, you couldn't like just one little slit. Like, nah, nah. Come on, man. Nah. I mean, nothing. Okay. I mean, look, I got actually this though. Might as well get it out the way now. When we talk about all the suits. So, did you like Amazon Omega or New Omega suit? I like regular Omega. Uh, I find it funny as a, you know, a playing with the trope. Like when he gets that upgrade to new Omega, like yeah. he constantly gets his ass whooped. Like in any other, like in any other show, when you upgrade to a new suit, like, you know, oh yeah, that's his bad ass for him. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, what was crazy too is that I think, okay, so one of the side things that I like about it was, so in the original show, um, I think which I think Amazon was it Amazon, yeah Amazon actually was blinded and what they did was they actually changed the color of his eyes to yellow to signify that he's blind, and um, Jen in the show actually goes blind. This is like you know when they released the little gas that's supposed to fuck up all the Amazons and stuff because again, yeah, at the end of season one, what was it called the Talak Project? Yeah, the Talak Project, which essentially it was like hey fuck it, we're going to have to get rid of all these Amazons because essentially, it's kind of like the Commandos kind of ran its course so that I guess they were just like, fuck it. Gas like, it they're all. going to do the, the, literally, the literally the nuclear option. Yeah. Um, and like, they were building that up for like the whole season one, like the episode yeah, the, the, um, the Amazon Gordon Ramsay, the episode when they first, re- no, 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 that was the second second time they did second it. The time, first time was time. in the um, the colony of ants. The second time they did it was with the um the Gordon Ramsay when they're the, the Amazons who were trying to live in peace, mm-hmm. and they tried to escape, and they was like, "Nah, man, drop them drones on them." <laughs> Which I'm like, look, I, I mean, I'm not saying I like it, but I understand. 
I mean, like I said, this this, this show is um, if you want to say morally gray, like I don't really think there are any really heroic good guys here. I mean, Haru is I mean, probably the only one. That's only because you could say but, he's kind of like innocent bystander of the whole thing because he's I'm, it's like he's. I mean, if you really think about it, he's a product of his circumstances. He didn't ask to be an Amazon. He was created exactly, this way. exactly. And he and he for for most for like not most but all the show he fights for both sides. And I think if you want to say there was a there's a good good guy, yeah. it was him. Even if, well, no, but then again, even he still had questionable things that he did and he was living in that gray zone because at, at the end of the day, you're defending people, Haruka. That's, that's noble, but you're also defending, you're still defending people yeah. who eat other people. So that, you know, that, that's gray. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and it, the funny thing is, if we're talking about uh, Operation t it killed 3,000 of the Amazons. And I'm like, so you still got about, Maybe under a thousand left that you didn't kill. I mean, I guess you could say maybe mission accomplished, but still, you know. Yeah, and again, the CEO guy when they told him that he was just basically like, "Well, there'll be someone that survive." Cool beans. Still got more to kill, dog. That's how it is. I mean, I'm still, I'm still doing my evil CEO shit. Let's see, let's see what happens. Yeah, but like, go, but like going back to him though, like when he gets captured, when Jin gets captured. That's where it was kind of like, okay, so they're they're basically doing experiments on him. But I was like, at the same time, there are certain things about Jen that we kind of realize he's kind of on his own. Because when we look at the Amazon belts itself, he apparently made those belts. We don't know why yeah. he did it. It's just he just made them. Well, I think it's because he knew the only way, again, this is all inferred. I don't think they say this in the show. But it's inferred. Kind of figure that, it out. You have to kind of figure. I think that's another thing with the show. They kind of make you kind of like figure it out based on what's being shown. You know. Yeah, like you have to pay attention. Like they don't outright say it, but he knew the only way to fight the Amazons was to be an Amazon himself. But he didn't want to turn into an outright Amazon and go berserk. So he developed the belt to um, harness the power in a more efficient way. Because when um, he runs into Haruka. The first time he takes him back um, to his house where he lives with his girlfriend slash well yeah his girlfriend uh, Nana Naha Chan Naha I call her Naha Chan Nahana <laughs> yeah Nahana <laughs> and uh, he gives him he gives him the belt Nanaha Nanaha gives him gives a Haruka the belt to keep him from um, going wild and berserk oh yeah I mean and also that whole operation thing kind of because once he gets kind of sort of because essentially the initial operation like half his face is like kind of like messed up and stuff and it kind of it kind of made him a bit of a schizophrenic because he had like a bit of a split personality essentially going into season two well yeah like i'm surprised that he survived the uh Talek operation because it but it, it did fuck him up it didn't give him a cause like plot, he, plot armor prime plot armor you know how it like is. like no like i said a <laughs> man literally too angry to fucking die Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he has the lead character plot armor, but damn it, like, he'll go from, hey, he's cool as hell, and then, like, five minutes later, I'm going to kill you. And it's like, Jesus Christ, dude, you just shook my hand just a minute ago. Like, like do you do you need a sneakers? Do you want me to, <laughs> you want some Chick-fil-A? Like, what's, what's, what's going on here? Yeah, you said Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I mean, the, the man clearly loves him some chicken. I'm just saying. Just, hey, look, let's let's, like, let's hey, talk look, this out. Look, look, look. Can, we, can we dub Jen a black man since he clearly loves chicken? Is that what we're saying? I mean, with with the amount of fucks that he didn't give, I I I coded him as a black dude. Is that is that wrong? <laughs> Unbridled Negro rage. Is that what we're saying? I'm just saying, like the man didn't give a fuck. Yeah, he had a living he had a living girlfriend, ate a lot of chicken. Look, I'm just saying, I'm not saying it. I'm just pointing out facts. That's all I'm saying. I mean, well, I mean, that's what that's what we do for our hero morph medicast. Point out facts. That's just oh. what it is. And also, you know, he all Jen also has kids on the sides as he fucks his girl too at the same time you know so just yeah jumping ahead to season two like that that whole episode when they did the reveal about how um what happened in that time gap between season one and season two Mm -hmm. i feel like not only is that the best episode in season two because not not just because it focuses on the season one characters ironically Mm -hmm. but like it, they 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 took that that weird gradient filter the show had on off like it was the the brightest the brighter color episode. Mm-hmm. Um, it had a lot of interesting events going on, um, but also we learned a lot of things about the world itself and the characters from season one. I thought was really really good. Well, except and, for especially our boy um, Bull Man, like he 
went from like I'm gonna kill other other Amazons, and all of a sudden he turned into fucking MLK, you know, got a fucking underground railroad fucking like Amazons. yo, like <laughs> he when you talk about a fucking character arc, he went from like just meek and everyone let's be friends and be on the same side together. I'm gonna eat my hamburgers to yo fuck humans. All these yo, all went, these flesh he, things gotta die. Yo, he went Black Lives Matter on that shit. Like nah, bro, <laughs> <laughs> bro. He, he was like motherfucker. I will overcome. Please believe that shit. <laughs> And, like folks think we're joking but it's like no he like that and that's interesting too that's another angle that i like about the show it's like it wasn't just the typical like we see in in sentai and even common writer where it's just good versus evil it's like no like i said the Amazons, like, there's it's, some nuance it's, to them it's, it's, there's it's nuance to this. yeah there's nuance to this shit. like i said again while you have your little evil piece of shit Amazons, you, again, you still have some Amazons like yo i just want a little piece of life yeah sure i'm a cannibal but i can figure this out Right, just give me some time. We can, we can work something out. I mean, what? <laughs> we can go to a morgue. I mean, I can eat a finger here and there. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> just give me some convicts, and we're good. Right? Cool. You know. I mean, we can we can work out a system, bro. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but it's like, but again, you feel for him because it's like, I mean, they can't help it. It, it is what it is. But like I said, he yeah. got. It's like when he gets militant, it's like, oh shit! Like he ain't fucking around on this. Like. But the thing oh, is, and again, yeah. and again, back to the the uh, the Gordon, the, the Amazon Gordon Ramsay episode when like he starts his fucking character change when he eats that fucking patty. Yeah, oh, I felt. Oh my gosh. Oh, he I was felt, all like, "This is good. What is this human? Oh, 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 oh no, oh no, oh no, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh no, baby, what am I doing? <laughs> Like, no, yeah, I feel mine. bad, man. I feel bad because he was really like, oh, man, this tastes pretty damn good. All right. And it's like, oh, it's human, dog. He's like, you want a hamburger? Not made of, not made from that shit. I want some of that succulent meat. <laughs> it's like the shit from Demolition Man. Rat burger, huh? Got a beer so I can kind of wash this down, please. <laughs> I would really love this. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, But, yeah, it, it, it's... it's whew. Man, I'm sorry. That Gordon Ramsay shit just kind of fucks me up a little bit. Just that whole fucking episode, <laughs> that, like the the fucking staging, like the the lighting when the dude came in, thinking he's gonna get like a nice hot meal, and the chef came out and said, "Oh, there's some seat back here. Why don't you come this dude, way?" I felt bad for the humans. That's the sad. That's the fuck. It's like it's a double edged So it's like, oh, oh, you don't know what you're walking into. You think you're going to a nice restaurant? Oh, 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 oh no, oh. <laughs> And it really showed that the police ain't shit. They didn't really look into that shit. It's like so you got. I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm pretty fucking sure CEO dude had all them sons of bitches in his back pocket. You ain't seen that nan cop in this damn show. <sighs> fucking mom, wives, fucking husbands are like, "Where's my wife? She came in here last." Oh, I don't know what to tell you, dog. Oh, I think I might have seen her around around back. By the freezer. Yeah. You want to? We can we can go this way. We can uh we can see where. But the good thing is, it, it's it's kind of one of those these these are bad guys that you're you kind of do relish when they get their comeuppance. It's like oh I can't. It's kind of like one of those. I love how they kind of they didn't just one episode kill them off. It's like oh they building up to when they get killed. You kind of like yes they deserve to die. Thank you. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially um especially in season two, like the uh the rose thorn Amazon. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I mean, look, I, look again. I, I will give credit where credit is due. They really make they really make you love to hate this guy. Like, yo, fuck this dude. He gotta die. But yeah, at the same time, you felt bad for him because, like, again, no Amazon asked for what happened. I'm a product what, of my environment, Prime. <laughs> yeah, and then but but then what set him off is like they shot his girlfriend in the spine, thinking it was him. So, Ooh, man, you know, like I say, shades of gray. Lots of gray. I mean, my man, the vulture at a- Amazon, though, I'm just saying, like. <sighs> and when we talking to the Amazon, can we just take for a minute, like, as much as I enjoy Toei and most of their designs, is it just me or, like, I feel like Amazon supports my theory where I feel like nobody in the design department talks to each other? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that every show, sir? Like, I mean, because, like. In the narrative of the show, the Amazons are basically like were people. Like they transform and yeah. they're human cannibals, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That, that I, I get behind that. I understand that that's cool. Yeah. Explain to me then why when they transform, why do some of them have like top hats and capes and monocles <laughs> and shit? It's like, but that's you know what I will, I will admit that does fuck it up because you're like you can get pe- like you know again I I am all for the horror of it and stuff because the show does a good job. 
But then in the back of your head, like you said, when you see the top hat stuff, I'm like, is this Power Rangers? Like, what's going on? I mean, I don't mean that like a negative way. Like, I know this. This is I, I like. I know what this is. I know this is a camera writer. writer has some really goofy monster designs sometimes. But I'm like, again, the narrative of the show is these are people transform into essentially like were creatures. I mean, it's like if Mr. Peanut so like, transformed into an Amazon. It's like, why does he got a top hat on? Like, what that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, so I can understand having like animal elements, like the um, like a uh, EU from the uh, second season. Like, I can understand why she has that feather swoop because that's supposed to be hair in her eye. Like, I get yeah, that. Yeah. totally understand that. I get that. That's cool. Whatever. But I'm talking about like the fucking magician Amazon had the fucking top hat and the cane. Like, <laughs> what biological imperative? <laughs> I mean, does any of that, sir? Like, I can understand Mamoru when he had the the, the drill beak like nose, like because he's a fucking mole. I get that. I understand that makes sense to me. Or or the Panther Amazon that had the cop uniform on. I'm like, like what? Like, it's so like were you guys being designed for another show, or somebody just walked into the design like, studio and said, "Scoop, scoop, scoop, scoop"? Because my thing was like, I wish that they on some of them they just went like, cause you know how Guyver, even in live action, when those people transform, oh, they ripping fucking clothes off. Like, yeah, like there was that like, again, like it, it, there was a conscientious design choice made to how those creatures looked in the in the, in the Guyver. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, look, the stag beetle that has the fucking bride dressed on still gruesome to be fair gruesome but still i'm like i mean you could take the dress off but i mean cool i guess that's cool i mean sure i mean you know it's just, but i mean look i but even beyond that though i did like the designs of it they 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 kinda, oh yeah they're good they, they went very especially with the new like season two we get into new type amazons and stuff and Basically, all new type Amazons are is basically humans infected by Amazon cells. Mm-hmm. By by the most fucked up <laughs> Fuji water cooler scheme of all time. Thanks, Mamaru. Yes, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> come on, come on, Prime. You, you you can't go into season two without new fuckery happening. I mean, that's just how it is. Oh, and speaking of speaking of, did I have, did we have I mentioned this already? But like, it's something to say about the fight scenes in this show, man. It goes a long way when you design the Kamen Rider suit to be not based around a toy gimmick. Like, mm-hmm. there, there is a gimmick there, like the little gadget widgets and, like, the little belt injector things and all that shit. I mean, There's pull, a gimmick pull there. Out the fucking pipe outside the fucking belt, but that's about as much as they get out of it. Everything else yeah, is just... Yeah, or, like, a grappling hook, whatever. Yeah, all they... Yeah. But, yeah, you can do some really fun things and some really visually striking things in fight scenes when you don't have to rely on attachable gimmicks and shit. Don't yeah. get me wrong now. I love the attachable gimmicks and shit. Yeah. I think it's cool, yeah. but we get, we're starting. We were starting to hit a point where camera rider fight scenes are just kind of uh, bad because they could only do so much with so much <laughs> bobbles and shit hanging yeah. off the suit. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, now going back to the whole thing with some of the human beings affected by Amazon cells, it's actually a precursor because our boy Jun, who got killed, was it first second episode? Um, yes. Uh, they injected him, his dead body with Amazon cells, and he got revived. As, yeah, based uh, off the research they did when they captured Jen, uh, Jen and took inf- info from his belt and shit, and it was like, hey, we can uh, make we our can own. this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, Jun gets revived as Kamen Rider uh, Amazon uh, Sigma, and proceeds to fucking regulate. Oh yeah, he he regulates shit, and 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 the fact that Jen initially was like, I could take this dude, I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, you got washed. <laughs> he got washed. <laughs> Yeah, you fucking. You, I'm talking about Green Ranger fighting the Power Rangers level mud stomp on his ass. The only thing that saved his life was his damn girlfriend. I mean, see, I was going. Well, yeah, yeah, that is Green Ranger level. See, I was going to go like Super Shredder versus the Turtles on the first movie on the rooftop. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> he, mean, beat, he beat he beat Jin. <laughs> I, I mean, yo, he put hands on Haruka too. So the fact that like Haruka and Jin had to literally double team his ass, I was like, yeah, that that. That's what had to happen. There was no other way to beat his ass. And can I also say about Sigma, again, I fucking love the CEO dude. Like, when uh, Tachi Bonner came to him with, like, I've created a new Amazon based off this data. This is an Amazon that does not need to eat. The CEO was like, excuse you? You made a living thing that doesn't need to eat? Well, that's fucking stupid. There has to be a, <laughs> there has to, Surely there has to be a downside to this. 
He's like, no, it's the perfect Amazon. He was like, nah, bro, to live, to live is to eat. Like, <laughs> that doesn't make any damn sense. Yeah, I mean, that's it's like dumb come idea. On, come on, dog. You know, you know, he's gonna have to eat something. You know, and yeah. So it's yeah. <laughs> what he did, he did eat that ale though. <laughs> well, because the thing of it is, the the downside is that even though he's undead and he doesn't need food, he still needs to be maintained. Essentially, because it's kind of like it's high fucking maintenance. It's basically a zombie in a fucking Kamarada suit, if you really think about it. I mean, not if you think about it. It's just, that's one hundred percent what it is. Yes. Yeah, okay. Man, my bad. It's a zombie in a Kamarada suit. <laughs> so he's dependent on the fucking pharmaceutical company to do a good job. So you know, if Frank comes in there drunk and shit, working on him, well, he's he's pretty fucked. Essentially, you know. And yeah, he doesn't feel pain, which is again another stupid thing for a living creature. <laughs> So he gets his arm chopped off. He's like, what is that? Hmm. Like, I'll just keep going and fighting. And I'm like, I gotta be honest with you, that's a dangerous person to fight. Like, you cut his arms off. It's like, so he can just bite me now. So, so yeah, oh. so now he's just gonna be essentially the, the fucking Black Knight from Monty Python. Oh. I cut your arm off, you stupid bastard. <laughs> just with a flesh wound. <laughs> Jen should have, during that fight, be like, yo, cut his legs off. Get him out of here. <laughs> you know, I think if they had the money, they probably would have. Probably, you know, but um, but yeah, yeah, it, it, it takes it takes the dynamic duo to fight him. But I find it funny that immediately after that, it turned into fucking like the end of uh uh <laughs> the, the first the first Dragon Ball Z movie and shit, where all of a sudden fucking Omega and Alpha are like, all right, so we beat them, let's fight. And I'm like, well, of course they they got to fight, of course, of course, why not? You know. Well, because wars change, CJ. Yeah, war is hell. As Kojima, so put it. Um, but the kicker is that when you get into the second half of the season, it's kind of a role reversal because Ruka ends up turning into somebody that more or less can control his Amazons, and like you said, Jin is basically fighting angry the whole season, essentially. And when, we, when he finally shows up to um, spoilers, 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 when he finally shows up to uh, hunt his son. Yeah, who, 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 by the way, like, we, we gotta talk about uh, uh, Chihiro. Um, so, he had a bit of a uh, fucked up origin, because of course he does. Uh, you know, it's not enough that your dad, you know, they got, you know, your family has to stash you off. Your mom decides to leave your dad because your dad's gonna fucking kill you when you were born. Well, it's also the fact that when you turn into an Amazon, you kill your own mom, and you have to kind of bury that, that, that memory to kind of make it seem as though another Amazon killed your mom. Yeah. That's a bit of a uh, rough rough upbringing, so to speak. I mean, you know, as you do in Japan. That's how they get down. How they get down. Yeah, yeah. As far, as far as tragic anime backstories, how would you rank that? Hmm. I rank it, like, top five. I mean, it's, it's pretty fucked up. Top five. I mean, you, you eat your mom because you can't control your Amazon... Uniform and, and stuff. And uh, your dad is gonna fucking kill you because his his mortal enemy is basically helping you out and raising you essentially. <laughs> first of all, you know how first of all, Haruka, you are a horrible fucking uncle. You son of a bitch. <laughs> See, I wasn't gonna say it. I'm just saying I was, I was gonna be dead beat ass ass about this. Hell no, nah, you dead beat ass <laughs> uncle. And I'm like, you know what this boy is. You know what he can possibly go through. You just gonna go like, okay, so you, I know the situation, and like this whole, oh my god, this is like a comedy of fucking errors. So Jen, um, goes to talk to his old mentor, tells him all about the Amazons, tells him that his um his girlfriend is pregnant, and his mentor is like, oh, so what's gonna happen when he's, the kid is born? He's like, well, if he's born an Amazon, I'm going to fucking kill him because fuck Amazons, that's why. Yeah. And then Haruka's like, yo, Holmes, you can't fucking kill your fucking kid because it's going to break your girlfriend's heart. He's like, you know what, Haruka? Fuck you. I do what I want. Haruka's like, okay, bet. Hey, (laughs) Nana, get your kid. Get the fuck out of (laughs) here. Well, that's also on top of the fact that, like, he ain't really jiving with some of the, the fact that, like, you know, apparently some of the Amazons want to convert the humans into new type Amazons. He's like, oh, no, no, we can't be doing that shit. Like, this is going to fuck things up considerably now. No, uh, no, nah, see, that's going to, can't, can't have none of that shit. So then he goes and he flies off the handle with his mentor and is like, so where, where my mama at? 
He's like, she don't want to talk to you like this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she don't like so, you, dog. <laughs> he's like, let it go home. He's like, she she got the restraining order, man. You don't 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 go fuck up that. She <laughs> you get no visitation homes. And so he flies off on the on the deep end, causes his mentor to cut himself on a vial of um his son's blood. So then eventually that turns that dude into an Amazon, who then um wigs out, kills his family, rips out the eyes of one of his daughter. His daughter is then in time saved by Haruka, mm-hmm. who then takes the daughter to the the corp the, the pharmaceutical corporation. They go, hmm, you know what'd be a really good idea? Let's dig up that Sigma project we tried a couple of years ago and turn this chicken to an undead Amazon. Yeah, that that wasn't the brightest of ideas because what so, could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I mean, what what could possibly happen? So we have this fucking kamikaze of fucking comedy of errors of all bad judgment just circling around these this whole entire family, this whole like snake eating his own tail of misery <laughs> of like one event led to another led to another. Which then leads to Jim uh, approaching Chihiro finally, having lost his eyesight now. On his, I'm going on his um, Kung Fu: The Legend Continues journey across the uh, the city, <laughs> killing Amazon. and shit, <laughs> bro. He's like, I'm the wandering fucking murderer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. Life, life, life came at his ass fast. Like he went from like first season, he's all like cool, calm, and collected. I got this shit, and then like, yo. I do. I gotta be honest with you. The, tra- the trajectory of Jin, it it hit. Uh, it basically went downhill once he got captured and them fucking and that and that operation went full tilt and he just went nuts. Haven't been the same since. <laughs> yeah, like especially if, when they released it, the fucking gas in the city in the end of season one. He was standing outside going, "Yep, this is my time. <laughs> I'm gonna take as many of them out as I can before I go." Oh, I'm still alive. Guess I gotta kill some more. Yeah. Oh. I'm still alive. Guess I got to fire Haruka. Oh, yeah. Haruka, you don't want to kill me? You're taking pity on me? Your mistake, Holmes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It, 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 it's wild. I, I, like I said, I love it, all that stuff. But then, then you got the movie. Um, So I got to ask you, like, given how season two ended, was, like, because, I, like I said, I, I never paid attention to any of, like, kind of like the news outlets and stuff around the time did they it was it was like basically that movie last judgment ever planned ahead of time or was it always like oh it's just getting two seasons and that was it you know i don't know because i'm trying to remember i think the fact that we got a season two was a surprise i mean look, i don't think season one you know was what it was i mean and so like I don't know. I, you know, I, you know, I don't want to say they don't know. Like, I feel like most Tokusatsu shows from Toei now, you're mm-hmm. guaranteed at least a movie because I think they all get one now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, what sucks even more is realizing that Chichiro actually dies off screen. You know, any other show, I would have given. I would have like I was talking to a friend of mine, and we were, we both pretty much agree. Like any other show, we would have risen hell over this over. Mm-hmm. But because of because this is Amazon, because it's kind of a like on traditional camera show, and because of some of the things that it did, you know, I'm glad it actually spared us that because I really didn't want to see a man have to kill his son. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and a lot of that had to do with basically Chichiro kind of losing control of himself, essentially. Yeah, like Ch- Chichiro's whole story is like it's so it's so messed up. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I felt I, I felt nothing but bad for the guy. Like he's living with the the, the Amazon YouTube hunting team, mm-hmm. um, you know, getting them get it's just a prank, bro. Getting mm-hmm. them uh the YouTube likes while they're hunting Amazons in the city. Yeah, and like he's seen he's so detached because like he's cause he's seen some shit and he's been through some shit, and he's trying not to eat his friends until he runs across uh EU mm-hmm. and he realizes oh this is the first person that I I've met that I never wanted to that I didn't want to eat. Well, it turns out you didn't want to probably eat her because you can't fucking smell her because she's a fucking corpse. So yeah. <laughs> so your whole, your whole situation, Holmes, is just fucked up. But like I said, any, any other show, I would have been like mad as hell. Like I to this day, I still have not forgiven the ending of Kamen Rider Habiki 
when they show uh, Hibiki at that giant drum at the end, mm-hmm. when like that swarm of Makamo coming at him, and the rest of the Oni are like trying to um, keep him back so he can, you know, finish performing the ritual. Mm-hmm. And they show that shit at the beginning. And I'm like, oh man, this final episode is gonna be time skip. Fuck you, show. <laughs> like, Fuck you the in the hell? ass. Like, what the hell, show? You're killing me here. <laughs> I'm like, I have my my balls were so fucking blue. I'm pretty fucking sure. I mean, if I lifted them up, they would have had like an atomic symbol drawn on the the very top of them. I mean, biggest blue ball moment of all time. I mean, it's it's in the top three. It's in top three. I mean, I'm I'm confident. Top fucking three. Cause <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> like, have you seen? Have you seen it? I mean, look, no. I have, I need to I need to actually finish Hibiki because like I've been like so bounced around at so many different shows. But like when I see it, I'm gonna be like, you're probably gonna see me on Twitter like, Yo, Prime, what the fuck was that? <laughs> bruh, bruh. Like the fucking music, like how they was how they staged it, how they set up the, the shot and shit when they showed the camera pan back and you see just Habiki, he just going at the fucking drums. You see like this swarm of monsters coming at him. I'm like, oh fuck, this is gonna be dope. what the hell? What do you mean two years ago? What the fuck? <laughs> I mean that's about as much as big of fucking blue balls as fucking is the fucking legendary battle on Power Rangers. I'm like, what was this? Like more, more, please. No, but at least, no. <laughs> but at least we saw something. Even if we saw it all throughout the show, because for some reason you sons of bitches kept sprinkling in the beginning. It's not a cold opening, you son of a. Actually, I take it a step further. Biggest blue balls next to the fucking shit at the end of RPM. Where I'm like, are we gonna get kind of a sequel to RPM? I don't know. We're just gonna give you this this anticlimactic ending. God damn it. No, I don't know. Again, I'm a. I'm I don't a know. Little blue balls, we, we tra- a little bit on that. One. I can. I can feel you. We talked about it. Like um, RPM was another, another show that uh, book tradition and book expectations. Even though like the finale and Go Andre was really fucking dope. Oh yeah. When they all fought together, like I'm a. I'm a. I'm a fucking sucker for like Sentai last battles. Like that's that that shit gives me life. Look, listen. I I remember before. We got Mega Force and Super Mega Force. I was showing that people the finale, that final fight in Gokaiger. The amount of people that were like, "What show is this? Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit!" Even if you, like, even if you never watched Sentai, that final fight even gave you Rangers. If you just familiar with just American shit, and you were like, "Oh my god!" Ah, you know, and it's just like, wow. Like, this is what we get. and like, and I and I and I don't know if I don't know if I, I don't remember if I brought this up in the Mega Force podcast. But like it's it's telling to say that Go Kaiger began with the legendary Ranger War. So that set that that set the president off. Like that's this so this from so everything that follows after this is gonna be fucking amazing. But Mega Force ended with the legendary Ranger War. That's like two different tones. Like that's just two different goal posts, like Yeah. I mean come on. I mean, and you know what's crazy too, before we get into the movie proper, is the fact that there were two movies with Amazons. You had, you know, Kamarader, the Amazons, was it the, uh, the, uh, Black Reincarnation? Was it Reincarnation? Well, cause you was had, it? no, no, it was Awakening, which was basically just, no. it was just basically just a broke down version of season one. Then you had, was it Transmigration, which was season two. Yeah, I think not, I'm sorry. I think, yeah, season one was Awakening and Reincarnation was season two. Yes, well, they call it transmigration, but yeah, it's supposed to be reawakening and stuff. Um, and then, like, basically, Kamen Rider Last Judgment was basically essentially, like, kind of like the finale to the series. But then they were, they were it also... Was their Shars, it was the Shars counterattack of the franchise. Yeah, and basically before that, you had Ultra Superhero Tyson, which was essentially Kamen Rider slash Super Sentai Ultra Superhero Tyson. And yeah, so, like, Amazon's in that, like, they... What's really funny about that is like they were just in for like a quick cameo, which is kind of funny because Amazon is marketably marketed at a slightly older audience. Although I don't know, I say that, but like Japan doesn't view things the same way like we do in America. So yeah. like, with so anyway, yeah, scratch that. So like, even though it's, it's it's premiered on Amazon, it's not aired at the same time as other traditional camera writer shows. It was kind of weird seeing them pop up at that. Interesting tidbit, though, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that movie was the first appearances of Neo. Get out of here. No, I'm not bullshitting. Yeah. Wow. That's the first time he appeared. He, he, he showed up in that movie before season two premiered on Amazon in Japan. Wow. Oh, I didn't know that. Didn't yes. Know that, at all. That, that, is, that is very interesting, this stuff. 
you know what? One day, I need to ask my boy, our boy DJ Sue over in Japan if he attends that because you know he's been he's been to all the Dragon Ball ones, but I need to ask him if he's ever went to any of the um, to the movie theater, to any of the Super Sentai or Kamen Rider movies and stuff. Because I'm at, I'm always curious because you know here in America we get comic book movies. You know everybody it's 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 huge, and I'm always curious of how huge those movies are in movie theaters over there. Yeah, I think the the Heisei Generation is final. Yeah, uh, I think that was number one for a hot minute. I think it made a billion. Wow, oh, a billion yen. Yeah, I think. Shit. Don't don't quote me on that. Like I know I know there was like it was in the news for a really big milestone, but I forget what. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's. I'm always curious because you know it's funny. Like I really, I think we talked about this before, but I feel it's it's bear repeating and stuff. I'm curious to see if if we if. What at least I guess we're talking Kamen Rider. What do you think? You know, Power Rangers is always it's this franchise and stuff. What do you think needs to be done to get Kamen Rider? Not necessarily on level of Power Rangers because that's like twenty plus years that they've been kind of ingrained in us. But what do you think would get people wanting to watch Kamen Rider <sighs> in some way, kind of like Power Rangers? You know, I don't know. I I'm, I often find myself thinking about this a lot in just different ways. Like for a minute, I was like just dead set on a Kamen Rider Hollywood movie because I think it pretty much writes itself like a motorcycle enthusiast fights a terrorist organization and transforms into a karate bug man. But yeah, I mean, I watch it. <laughs> I mean, what can go wrong? But then like the more I think about it, the more like I just I don't I don't know. Like for whatever reason for all the good that is done to bring in tokusatsu to a wider audience and bring it to a global stage, I think Saban and Power Rangers has done a lot of detriment to the image of the genre uh, where for better or for worse, it's seen as kind of um, air quote kitty shit because of um, questionable decisions done with the franchise and that the direction that the franchise has taken. Yeah. So I feel like it has a stigma to it now. Like it really does have like this kind of a funk to it. Yeah. Where people kind of like, you know, hold their nose up at it. Yeah. So, I don't know. Whenever people see people in funny costumes, punching the people in rubber costumes, like, I don't know. It really bothers me when I hear or see people react to, to uh, tokusatsu in a certain way. Because I'm like, okay, so tell me how is this franchise about dudes and spandex punching people in rubber costumes any different from your fran- any different from a Marvel movie or any different from any other costume show with people in the funny costumes punching other people in rubber costumes. Like I don't understand. I don't. I just don't. I don't understand. Maybe it's not meant for me to understand. I mean, because like, like I don't. I don't like. Yeah, I don't like the the hypocrisy of it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Because I think when we talked about with Kamen Rider um, Dragon Knight, I felt that that was a good start. And I think it's just they just came at the wrong time, considering Kids WB was kind of like getting out the whole Saturday morning shit. And it, and, and I think that show kind of got a bad break because if it was on a stable channel, that could have made people more interested in, let's try Maybe to possibly. do another Kamen Rider, another Kamen Rider season or something, you know? Yeah, and, like, I, I, I agree. Like, I feel like it came at the, the... First of all, the people who were making the show, like, their hearts were all in the right place and, like, God bless them for it. Yeah. But, um, just again, poor decision and just mismanagement just kind of just killed any and all momentum. Yeah, and I mean, it's, and I think with, I mean, look, you got Kamen Rider fucking X-Aid, like, the, the video game shit, I, I mean, I, like, that, that's so potential to do you, something, that's potential to really, like, oh, you're doing video so, games. It's so much shit you can do with that, but, like, again, because of stigma and because of, you know, uh, American sensibilities, I don't really see them attempting X-Aid in America because, oh my gosh, the main character has a pink costume? Ugh. You know what I mean? Like I can it's see that. It's weird shit, like, because we loved Cameron when he was rocking pink. So <laughs> you are done, dude. You are you are already fucking. Know. I can already hear the normies, and it's making me mad just thinking about what they could say. <laughs> Cause I think me and you we talked about it like episodes ago when XA got announced, and it was like I wasn't feeling the the big form, but like when his main form came out, I was like, that's actually a pretty fun design. You know what? I'm I'm a, I'm maybe I'm in the minority, but I I have I have loved all of XA level one and level five. Like I just love level Blazing one me. threw me off because I'm used to like just a regular form common writer. So it was like, all right, yeah, I get what they're doing. I get that, but like I can see that, but like I 
I, I fucking loved it because it's something new, something different. It was it's fucking memorable. It's, it's it's awesome. But do you remember all the people again, um, mostly American fans, yeah. who were who were decrying the XA suit, going, "Oh my gosh, it's so ugly. It looks like something from a Trojan show." And I'm sitting here going, "Exactly, yes, this is exactly what it is." Yeah. Uh, are you are you new here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, hold up, time out though. Since we're talking about Kamen Rider, did they ever explain like the origin of the of the Neo belts, or was that just like the new company did it and basically, hey Haruku, you get a Neo belt? And it's like, okay, I guess. I'm trying to remember. I think it was basically it was the company and they went, Chishori, you get a belt. Hey Haruka, you get a belt because they initially wanted Chihori to basically fill Haruka's old role. Yeah, but then you know he went AWOL with the YouTube team, team his team ten. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't shit for that <laughs> <laughs> So he basically went AWOL and um if I'm not mistaken, I think it's implied or they even said I don't or they said it, I don't remember, but I think Haruka's mom gave him the new belt because somebody who 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 bought him who bought him the belt in the suitcase and said this is a gift from a benefactor? Um fucking um was shit. it the secretary dude? Yeah, secretary gave it to him. Yeah. Was it? Was it yeah. though? Was I, it? I think so. It wasn't uh, something else. Anyway, whoever gave him the belt, they implied it was from a benefactor, and it's implied later on in the show that the benefactor was his mom. Yeah. And, and meanwhile, Jen is sitting in the corner like, what the fuck, man? I don't get a belt either? Nah, dog. Nah. Blind and, blind and eating Amazon hearts raw. <laughs> Fucking Hannibal Lecter over here! <laughs> like the fuck, dude! Like I yo, understand you need the protein boost, but damn, bro! Last Judgment though, man! Like yo, like he, 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 Jen, Jen, and Haruka are on their shit because essentially, the the fight that happened, the three way fight that happened, that kind of took Tichiro's Ch- life, you know, basically kind of put Haruka and Jen even more on the outs than normal. Oh yeah, it was on site. <laughs> no pun intended. It was on site with them. Oh, yeah. um, so <laughs> the whole thing about Last Jasmine is we finally get to the 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 end of the literally the the end of it all because the only two Amazons left are Jen and Haruka, yeah. and Haruka is being hunted by his old squad, who's who's a member happen, also happens to feature his um his sister, yep, who had joined the military the, the 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 Amazon hunting crew back way back in season two, yeah. So, um, I feel like we skipped a whole lot of story to get to that point. Well, it's basically, there's orphans, there's, there's orphan childrens who basically, um, I think was it, um, Haruka was actually meeting the head orphanage director, if I remember correctly, and was like, hey dude, uh, we'll offer you a room here, but there's also another room that's off limits because apparently the orphans are offering the blood to some dude that's all actually an Amazon. Because you remember, basically, them giving their blood is kind of satiating his hunger, essentially. I'm trying to remember. I think so, because like, then when he tells me that that room is off limits, he goes and finds out that they, the, the director of the orphanage had captured Jen mm-hmm. and is using Jen's blood to turn the orphans into uh, am- to Amazons. And this is uh, Tachibana's a uh, new Sigma plan where they're going to use Amazon as a food source for humans. So now we've circled back around where it is the humans who are now eating Amazons. Which because... is fucked up because Haruka pops up. It is and again for a show they kept the, the whole scary, creepy aspect of it. You know, Haruka literally pops up and sees these parents that actually adopted one of the orphans. He's like, Oh, that's cool. And then he finds out, oh, you you you, you ate the kid? Oh, 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 you got to go. <laughs> yeah, he, he flips the fuck out. But by the way, early in the movie where he, he gets fucked up, which caused him to get to the orphanage is when his team, led by his sister, find him. And they're just, like, shooting him up, trying to kill him. And she uh, risks her life to save him. And they both do that standard camera rider thing. You know, you fall in the river, wash up somewhere else later on. Yeah. Dude, I was, like, laughing for, like, 20 minutes. I was like, that is, like... <laughs> That is Cameron Rider trope number 15, like, goddamn. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and so he finds out that they're turning kids into Amazons with Jen's blood, and the director of the orphanage is also an Amazon, and he's um, Neo Alpha, 
who, by the way, Neo Alpha, huh? I liked it better when they called it Kamen Rider G4. I know, right? Like, G, like let, let, if, we, if we're going to be real about Kamen Rider Neo Alpha, I'm just sitting there like, so you're not really, per se, a full-blown Amazon. You're just a dude with a suit. Yes. You know, it's... it's... And he has a fucking Gatling gun. And he thinks he's King Dingaling. I mean, I thought it was. I thought. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean, yeah. You, I mean, I ain't saying. I ain't, I ain't saying he's wrong. I'm just saying he thinks he's King Dingaling. <laughs> I mean, look, you get a Gatling gun. Wouldn't you think that you're King Dingaling if you really want to be real I about mean, this? A Gatling gun attached to a sword, bro. Bro. <sighs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I mean, come. That's that's hot shit, bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I kind of, you know what though, I am shocked that they haven't released. And I mean, maybe years down the road they might release toys for these and stuff like. Coconut. I think, I think Neo Amazon got a figure art. I think, I think he did. No, I'm talking about beyond think... that because you know they do the morphers and stuff. They do the you know henshin devices and stuff. I'd be kind of surprised they actually do weapons of it too. I mean, maybe we get Bandai Premium. They're doing the Lord's work out here, yeah. so maybe. Yeah, that that is, that is 100% true. I mean, but, uh, you know, it is kind of interesting. Like I said, when we say that he do, that he's just basically kind of like not the other Kamen Riders, he doesn't even have like a raw form. He just transforms. No, yeah, he is, he's a straight up human. Yeah, you know, that's that's all he is. He just puts, basically, essentially, he puts the register on to make it seem like he's an Amazon, and that's how he's able to transform. Which, by the way, he thinks that's going to save him from Jen. Oh, he no. was wrong. <laughs> He thought it would save him. He was wrong. <laughs> he 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 chose poorly. Yeah, you know that Gatling gun couldn't save his ass from crazy ass Jen. Let's just be real about this. That that was he had no chance. Which I mean, look, you know, yeah. The second the second Jen got out those chains, I was like, yeah, it's over that dude. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like putting Brock Lesnar against a cruiserweight. Why why are we doing this? Like yo, Jen. yeah. Like the second he got out that basement, I started counting down. Like yeah, Neo Alpha is so fucking dead. <laughs> you imagine as soon as Jen gets unchained, time out, time out, time out. It's like nope, nope, sorry, you're dead. He basically tried that shit. He was like, <laughs> yo, so you gonna you gonna kill me? I'm a human. And Jen was like, yeah, about that. When I told you earlier, I saw you as an Amazon. I met that shit. And you know how I feel about Amazons. So. <laughs> I mean, sorry, dog. I ain't Haruka. I might have spared you, but nah. Nah. It's not, it's not happening. <laughs> well, but the thing of it is, too, is Haruka throughout the whole movie has been kind of. Tent- he's, at of- a cross- he's at a crossroads. I feel like Haruka's having an existential crisis. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to keep himself from not feeding on humans and eventually he has to do it in order to keep himself from committing suicide well the, the children of, show people dun, 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 dun. yeah yeah the show yeah, Haruka he, there's a couple points where like you say he's having that crossroads and stuff and when he eventually eats uh, Muku he tries to commit suicide by basically drowning himself <laughs> until his sister's like yo hey Hey, Stop hey, hey get, get get that shit out your head. Nah, we're not doing it. like, but, but I ate a person. You ate one person one time. Stop it. Yeah. It's like the only person you've ever eaten. You're, I think with all you've done and been through, I think you're allowed one, Holmes. Yeah. And, and, and they, even this too, like he's trying to, you know, Haruka's trying to fight Jin. Jin fucks him up and that's kind of what pushes Haruka to have to eat Muku and stuff. And yeah, you know, like I said, he kills Jin, you know, and stuff. It, it was bound to happen. I think we kind of saw that shit coming because you know you can't have crazy ass gin winning. Can't. I'm. I, I mean, you know what? It depends on what kind of message the show wanted to end on. <laughs> if Jin had one, because fuck. I, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I, but the thing of it is, too. They, you know, Mizuki ends up taking over as director of the orphan, orphans, orphanage, and you know all the children basically are under the care and stuff. And she thinks that Haruka's gonna come back, and Haruka kind of goes lone wolf and is like, "Nah, I'm good. I can't be around you kids." And he just dips. Yeah, Haruka, Haruka's had a hard life. Yeah, you know, only thing missing is him drinking some hard liquor to kind of end it. 
and stuff. But you know, hey. But he has he has an incredible Hulk moment. He's good. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> That's the only thing I was missing out of this is the, the is the sad Hulk thing. Because I mean, look, there there is no if you want to do this real, whole show. This whole show was a sad Hulk thing. There there is look. It's like any moment of happiness, it immediately just gets. Basically, it kicks you in the nuts with the sad moment. It's like, huh? So there's no happy moments, huh? There is well, no joy here. There's no joy here, kids. This, this, this is how it is, unfortunately. You know. So, I mean, um, like, like, like my my boy Bura said, sometimes life hands you a tragedy you can't avoid. Yeah, but I mean, look, I, you know, e- you know, even though that's the show, I do feel the show overall. I like it. I oh, was, I enjoy it. I, I, I enjoy. I enjoy it and stuff. I think there is a part of me that is that that does love the despondent show that isn't trying to go like happy ending and shit. It's like no, there's this is the depressing show. And and look, even with Mizuki taking over the orphan orphanage, you kind of realize yo the kids are kind of sort of Amazons too, basically. So well, you know what? No, I don't think so. I think. That's how the show ends. I think the last Amazon is Haruka because remember Jen goes in that rampage and he kills all the orphan kids who had Amazon blood in them. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Because I was, I could, I, I, could was, yeah, I could be mistaken. I could be mistaken. I, but I think that's how we're supposed to read that. That's, that's how we're supposed to read that scene because like he didn't kill all the kids. He was very specifically targeting which ones he attacked. Yeah, yeah. I was presuming that it was just basically kind of like blind killing and stuff. But yeah, now that you say that, it's like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I mean, if Haruka is that's the how last... that's how I interpret the scene because I think that's how they want to end the show with him being the last survivor. Yeah, and just he's gonna probably old man Logan himself and just be like, yeah, just gonna ride this out till I age out and be done. And you know what? Yeah, and you know what? If we get a third season or a movie of Old Man Haruka. I'll watch it. <laughs> incest, <laughs> incest, Jin protagonist. Antagonist. I mean. <laughs> Unless they do incest clone gens, I mean, they, you can, we can we can make this work, man. We can write this. Let's be real about this. It's Camarada Amazon's world. I do not put it past some fucking pharmaceutical company saying we clone Jen from the blood <laughs> from season two, and it's like, so we're gonna get Jen before the fucking anger and stuff. Wow, what could possibly go wrong with this? And then all of a sudden, he turns into like Dinobot two and just remembers his old life. <laughs> I'm I'm putting money in my computer to make this happen. Why isn't it working? I'm just saying, Prime, if we're still doing more for Medicast and somebody in Japan does this, I'm going to ask you to be like, yo, do you know anybody who knows Japanese so I can build them for money immediately? Give you a driver, get you something, shit. <laughs> it's like, can we, get, can we get some DVDs, please? I mean, that would be helpful here. You know, we just promoted this. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend this. I mean, the, like I said, um, if if you're looking for this folks, you could probably find, like I said, Amazon season one and two is on com- is on Amazon Prime. You can find Last Judgment. Shockingly enough, if you look online, you can find it. I think where I found it was Daily Motion. Unexpected. Yeah, unexpected. It was Daily Motion. Uh, where did you, where did you watch yours at? Uh, I ended up hitting up my the couple at um, was it Overtime or was it TV Nihon? TV Nihon. TV Nihon did. A- the subtitle, so I hit, so I hit them up. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you you can definitely find all of them there and stuff. But um, I, I will say this though. Um, what I do love about this and stuff too is that the acting from all the characters, big or small, actually worked out. Because look, you might be wondering, man, you guys talked about that uh that that chef Gordon Ramsay fucking Amazon a lot. Yes, because that was fucking great ass goddamn acting, creepy as shit too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't. I mean, there's a whole lot of good ones in it, like the um, the hairdresser Amazon, mm-hmm. the fucking rose store in Amazon. Like, there is plenty of creepy body horror shit in this show. And like, <laughs> unlike the unlike the original Amazon, where the mission statement was make cute noises, decapitate monsters. Nah. Um, this Amazon show's mission statement was just decapitate everybody. Yeah, you gotta go. No cute, no cute noises. I mean. And again, like I said, it did kind of borrow from that kind of like Giver thing with the monster designs and everything. Because it's just, I mean, the one that really stuck out to me, the Elephant Amazon. Was that the doctor who mm-hmm. had the real fucked up nurse? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, again... It, it, season two, it's all fucked up because people are a byproduct of what's going on here. Because that doctor Amazon only became one because he drank the contaminated water. 
But then once he became one, he was like, I am all in on this shit. This eating people, it's delicious. It's like, man, who knew this was great? <laughs> it's like, Wait, was, was he also the one? No, that was the hairdresser, the chick who had the fucking uh, guillotine in the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Fuck. <sighs> I mean, look, it, it, hey, actually, side note, you know, we talked about Chef Gordon Ramsay one. He was a fucking crab Amazon. Yeah, oh, he, that's right, he was. That's the Man, joke. Man, listen, I, again, creepy monster designs. Like, that's, that, mm, ooh, ah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, they, they really, they really knew how to, because again, if one of those monsters just rolled up in my room, you really think for a second I'm laughing at that shit? Nope. Mm-mm. No, unless eat me. Unless it's the magician Amazon, I'm gonna be fucking laughing my ass clean off. I mean, look, let's be real about this. Like, like, bro, why is your cape silk and see through? What the fuck, bro? Because I ain't gonna lie, like, the first episode of season one with the spider one that's just chilling in the corner, that, as somebody like me that doesn't like spiders, that creeped me out because I'm like, y'all just gonna roll up in that room with that giant ass spider. That's what we do, huh? Cool. cool. I don't know, man. The ant ones kind of freaked me the fuck out, especially with the heads in the refrigerator. Listen, I mean, yeah, that's mm, yeah. yeah I thought we we we're saying body horror, but I think that's not doing it justice. There's some real fuck going it really, on in Amazon. It really is it? I mean, it's like, and I mean, it's funny too because we look at the Queen Amazon. I ain't gonna lie, she's the only one that came off to me like a typical Power Ranger monster. Because of how she carried herself, so it it ne- I never got that body horror with her. Only just I only got it when she was killing people. But like when she's out in broad daylight, it's like oh she's kind of like a regular kind of like common rider type monster. I'm fine with this. It's you know she's she's playing it up. I- I'm cool with this. But yeah, the ant ones. I'm like ew, ooh, eh. You know so yeah. Uh, is there any final thoughts about this? Also, just on the aspect that I am shocked that the internet actually cooperated with us. This is, this is shocking. Am- I told you, like since since that time we were doing the um the Beast Wars episode when I went downstairs and I pointed the modem and said stop that shit. <laughs> Having impeccable yeah, internet right. ever since. So we did have some questions from the last two times we tried to do this episode. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, please hit us up. All right. So our dude Mad Coco Gaming on Twitter, he asks, since it seems to be doing well, what are the odds that we get previous Camera Rider shows on Amazon? Hmm, that's going to be a lot of licensing agreements on that one. You know what? I'm gonna I'm inclined to agree. I say the chances are pretty slim to none due to rights and licenses. I'm, I'm, but still, you, I'm still looking at Discotech. Like, come on, Discotech, do something, please. <laughs> but but you know what? You never know because I never would have thought I would have been able to watch all of Gridman in America. Man, yet here we are. Man, that's, that's the, that is the greatest gift you could possibly give. Again, folks, watch Grid Man. It's, it's on. It's on watch, Amazon. Please, yeah, watch both of them. Yeah, watch. Yeah, watch Grid Man. Was it Triple S? Watch, watch that yeah. and watch Grid. Quadruple S. Yeah, quadruple S. And, and watch Grid Man. You'll you'll love both of them. Especially, look, me and Prime, for the most part, we love Superhuman Samurai because that's kind of the show that was like I got to watch Grid Man, and that kind of jump started my interest in Grid Man. So yeah, trust me, if you like Superhuman Samurai to an extent, you'll love. Great man, easily. Yes, most definitely. I can't. I can't speak highly of both shows enough, especially the anime. Like, it's amazing to me that that show has done so well. We have to eventually, you know, cover it on the the show because I think yeah. we we have to talk about it. But I, I mean, um, I'm just saying. I think that anime hits the sensibilities of a lot of people that love mecha anime. So it kind of like, and I like. The show feels like it's so niche, like it's only made for like three people. But I'm so glad to see this doing it. It's doing Dude, the so fact well. That everybody is like going nuts for it. I was like genuinely shocked. I was like, oh shit, okay, people love this. I, I mean, I should be shocked, but still, I'm shocked. I mean, Trigger does it again. I'm like, I'm almost curious. Like, I really want them to do an adaptation of Cameron Rider Spirits now. I mean, look, this this uh, upcoming, uh, um, uh, damn. Say, Ultraman the on Netflix? Ultra, the Ultraman on Netflix? I, I, hey, look, seeing people get hyped for that. I mean, look, I wasn't a fan of the Godzilla stuff 
that they put on Netflix. Yeah, it's, I, I haven't I, watched the other movies yet. Like the first one, I was like, mm. yeah, they, they're doing like the director. He's very much very a, sim, a kind of a symbolic type of director when he puts the stuff in the movie. So the movies are less about the Godzilla fights and more about the symbolic aspect of the human conditioning and things like that. So it's like, oh my god, but yeah, there's a time and a place, bro. Yeah, I mean, I just want to see King Ghidorah fight Godzilla, not not this, and not the, oh, King Ghidorah is really just a spirit in the spirit world. I'm like, uh, uh, See, you're not making uh, me want to watch the movie, CJ. You're making me want to actively avoid it now. Hey, I didn't mean to. I, I took one for the team, and I just watched it, and I was like, at least I finished it. It's It's done. Oh my God! Me- meanwhile, I'm just watch. I'm just waiting for King of the Monsters to hit, so I can just love the King Ghidorah in that one to wash the-, the taste out of my mouth of the Netflix movies. You see the assholes try to hide Angerus. I know Angerus, and I see Angerus. How dare you? Look, look. You can- yeah, exactly. It's like you. No, mm, no, you can't do that. I- Don't play coy. How dare I- you, sir? I saw that, I saw that shit at Comic Con. I was like, nope, mm-mm, can't have that shit. Nope. I mean, look, you, look. All right, I'm already expecting Gamera to pop up in this shit too. Honestly, at this stage, I look, really am. If I, and if I don't see a fucking post credit scene with Destroyer, somebody's getting suplex. Look, if I see a flying turtle, I'm gonna fucking spike a fucking kid and be like, "Yes." <laughs> They're not giving it to us. Look, we haven't we haven't been that good, CJ. They're not giving. No, we haven't we haven't earned that yet. You know, American audience will lose their fucking mind. A flying turtle. I'm like, dude, you better put some fucking respect on Gamera, my dude. Like, that's the flying turtle. If I hear, man, you trying to start fist fights in the theater, CJ? Is that what you trying to do now? <laughs> I am, because <laughs> I won't be looking at people like you better put some fucking respect on Martha too. God damn it. Speaking, did you see? Do you watch Stan versus Stan against Evil? I need to watch it. I heard it's actually not bad. That show is so fucking funny. But like the last episode I watched, they had a fucking Mothra tribute episode. Yeah. Complete with the twins. And the, it's, it's fucking hilarious. It's, it's... Look, look, look. Also, if King of the Monsters puts some variation of the fucking twins in that movie, I'm going to lose it. Also, I'm trying to remember, did the King of the Monsters, did um, the first, the the reboot have the guys other theme in it? I don't think it did. Nah, just the Godzilla roar. Basically, they see now. Nah. I need them to drop that bass. It's moving. They need to drop that bass. Something. Even, even the fucking anime need to do that shit, man. Come on now. I mean, hey, I, yeah. I, I love the competition between America and and, and Japan now because Japan was like, oh shit, they, they, made a, movie? They, they made a good Godzilla movie. Fuck, I guess so we got put here's, out one. <laughs> here's Shin Godzilla. Did you see the Shin Godzilla? Yeah, I see, dude, I like Shin Godzilla. I'm, waiting, I'm, I'm patiently waiting for that sequel. So again, when I talk about there's a time and a place for symbolism, this this is how you fucking do that shit. Like, right here. <laughs> like, this, that, that shit right there. Hey, look, yes. I saw that tale with all the monsters. I was like, oh, they, they oh, ain't oh. done. They ain't, they ain't done. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, pa- apparently, um, they're scrapping Shin Godzilla 2, which I was, like, very sad. Because apparently they're trying to do their own kind of, like kaiju cinematic universe shit and i was like really well you know i can kind of see that because you don't want to have a snake eating its own tail type situation you know what i mean yeah so i can i understand but like you know you can still do your own little side story thing wait wait hold on what you mean you wait hold on so they're scrapping it and they're doing a brand new godzilla thing in japan yeah you know they said 20 they said uh 2021 is when they're gonna start why do they keep stopping and restarting the fucking timeline, I man? I don't know. I mean, it, it's... Y'all are worse than fucking DC and well, Marvel. Well, apparently, Damn. Well, apparently, it's because they have the deal with Warner Brothers and Legendary, so they can't really do shit until 2021. I don't know, and man. By then, and by then, we're going to get King Kong versus Godzilla, which I'm praying to God that's actually good. Hope, hopefully. Um... I'm not expecting much from that movie, but to see a giant lizard punch a giant, giant monkey. Look, look, that's all that he has to do. I mean, if we're circling back to Kamen Rider on this one, look, I, I'm i going to say 10 years from now, we might get a Kamen Rider in the United States. Don't know how, but it's going to pop up in the United States somehow. I mean, as long as, we, as long as movies are doing this trajectory that it's doing, I feel like a movie is probably inevitable. I mean... That's, that's my good instinct. I mean, because look, I would love for Phantom to do like special screenings of 
those Sentai movies and even Kamen Rider movies because it's like, look, you're already doing DBZ. Why not do a one night only for the Kamen Rider stuff at least just to kind of boost interest a little bit? I mean, shit, you could do it for the it's, Sentai stuff too a little bit if you wanted to. If you wanted uh, to. I don't know. I feel like Saban or, Saban or Hasbro might block that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're true. They'd be like, hey, hey, hey we're already doing a movie. Chill. <laughs> so I feel like they don't want to air quote confuse the brand. Nah. They they definitely don't. But um Yeah. That's, Look, uh, last question. Last, yeah, 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 last yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. So um our dude Sharpo, my man Sharp, yep. Mitten Box on Twitter. Mm-hmm. He says, I love the first season and certain aspects of season two. If this series was to expand into something like the Marvel Netflix stable, what show or heroes do you want and which will work best in a grittier style? Ooh, that is a good one. Mm. Okay. Okay, because I because you know it was based off the, the the show. I would not mind a uh, black and black RX series. I'm not mad at you because I think you could do season one black and then season two black RX. I just want to ask: Would you do it with where black and black RX are two different writers, or would you do it where he gets the like how he did in the show? See the uh, toy part of me will do a different character, but then the continuity nut in me would want it be the same character. I can see an argument for both. Yeah, but then I'm thinking about that moment in Kamen Rider Decay when they transform side by side, and that <sighs> shit was fucking dope. Funny, yeah, I wouldn't mind. I guess I would lean towards it being a separate person, then, like make Black RX like years later. Or you know, you know what? You can I think this can write itself because you can st- you can do what um Kotaro is black and maybe his brother who was Shadow Moon, um he breaks the Shadow Moon thing and becomes Black RX. I don't know. Ooh, we, we, yeah, we, yeah, that, mm, mm, that'd be you can write, you can write that around that. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. Uh yeah, I would definitely go that and if I had like a backup. Um part of me feels that y- I wouldn't mind them trying to combine Kuga and Ajito. Into a cohesive narrative? Yeah, into a cohesive narrative. That would be interesting. Well, he says show. He says show. But I, I'll allow it. Then, uh, well, you know, okay. That's just my backup. But yeah, if we're sticking streaky show, I'll go black and black RX. If we're going show, though, I'll back up and I'll even say... Because they technically already did Kamen Rider and then V3. I wouldn't mind stronger, if we're going to be real. Yeah, I was just gonna say you took mine because that's one of the ones I was I was gonna say. Like I really wouldn't mind a um a grounded stronger because I really want to see how they would update uh Joker and tackle. Mm-hmm. Plus, I think yeah, you can do some really interesting things with stronger story and visually. Yeah, I mean, do you feel that they could actually? How much of a do, would they really have to do a huge update on his costume, or it still be basically the same? I would say they should do what they've done for like the first and next and Amazons. It's like you keep the spirit, but like you just update it for the time. Yeah, I mean, look, I think when you look on it and stuff, it actually looks pretty. I actually think it's actually a pretty dope design. Yeah, like if you can just maybe, um, I don't know, like you just like say update the materials and that big ass chest shield. You can just, yeah, you can do some things with that. Oh yeah, I mean, do you have a backup pass stronger? Yeah, I have, I have, I have two. Um, I will want to do uh, the cross. Cause give him his, give him some time to shine. Mm-hmm. He got shafted in that damn movie. <laughs> Although we got kind of right of spirits out of him, so I don't know. It yeah. could be cool. Yeah. Or, or I would love to see. And this, this is just me. Give him another chance, Shin. Hmm. It's a Kamen Rider Shin, right? Yes. I'm trying to remember what it looked like. Oh. Ooh, yeah, yeah. That, I, you know what? That would actually be pretty dope. Cause I mean, if you really think about it, I think we talked about it with um, Ajito with uh, fucking um, Aquaman, Kamen Rider. Oh, um, Gills. Yeah, Gills kind of is kind of like the protoform for Shin a little bit. So yeah, the design kind of writes itself, honestly. 
Yeah, you can, and he, and if you've seen the Shin movie, he they kind of hit some of the same notes that Amazon's hits Ooh. in terms of body horror and fucked up shit going on. Hey, that body horror shit. That I think that's what kind of appealed to me because I was like, the oh, fucking shit, <laughs> the, that, the fucking baby man, like the f- fucking just fuck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It may look so painful for Pirate Kamen Rider Shin. That's the wild part about it. It's like, holy shit. Kamen Rider's like, Kamen Rider supposed to be this painful? Jesus. No life sucks, bro. <laughs> I don't know who got it worse. Him or the fucking dude from uh, uh, American Werewolf in London. That shit. I would say Shin because his fucking eyeballs pop out. That shit look yeah. damn. Uh, 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 why'd you have to remind me, Prime? I hate you. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Uh, uh, man, yeah. Then, then again, if they did remake shit, they really gonna make that shit fucking gruesome. So, oh yeah. Mm. Oh hey, that shit going straight HBO. <laughs> Cinematic especially, midnight. Say especially, especially after what they did in Amazon's. You best believe they're gonna be like, oh, we can get away with some shit now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm, yeah. This, 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 this definitely there. So, um, yeah. So, uh, I guess that's is that it for all the questions. That's all the questions I was able to capture. Yeah, so definitely uh, check out Comrade Amazon. It's a great show. I love it. That's that's again is me on this journey of like really diving into Comrade full tilt. I'm like, I am digging Comrade a lot. Welcome to the fold. Hopefully, we have we have pizzas. Ho- hopefully, everybody else joins in the fold and stuff. Yeah, and I hear a lot of people say that Camerata Amazon was kind of was kind of a gateway, and I can I can kind of see that. Yeah, I, I would think it. I think it serves as an, an adequate gateway series, because even though um, other Camerata shows may they say maybe aren't as bloody as Amazon's, I feel like they deal with the same kind of heavy themes, and they also have some of the some of the same kind of you know action beats like the fucking massacre in Kiva with that. Um, yeah, that's that's like huge body count, fucking Kiva. Yeah. So yeah, like it may it may not necessarily have the the same blood splatter because again it is aired on TV for children, mm-hmm. but I still feel like it, they deal with comparable themes and comparable things. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you like Amazon's, you might like Kamen Rider in general. <laughs> Actually, before we go, uh, we didn't talk about this earlier. So um, I'm feeling some sort of way about uh, this Power Rangers Battle for the Grid fighting game. You know, CJ, um, I don't know what to say. I, I'm not saving this for the next show. I, I, I just want to get this out now because I... So what? I mean, it looks like that damn mobile game. And no disrespect to people who like that mobile game, um, I don't. Uh, the fact that people are just like, oh my god, a fighting Power Ranger game. I'm like, mm, mm. I had it on Super Nintendo and it was pretty fucking dope. This, this ain't it. It's... it's it goes back to what I say. We we deserve better. I'm again. I'm not saying that I want sh- I, I, I want a, a, a Capcom to take the Power Rangers license and do it, but it's like though you know Capcom Ryu guest starred in that game. So if you <laughs> want the license, I mean, look, I'm I, just saying. I, I, it's just I just I just want a good power ranger game that doesn't have any hiccups because i remember remember i think on psn that power ranger came out and i was excited and i think you told me pump and break cj the game is garbage game is bad (laughs) and i was like damn it it's like Like i was and i was and i was the most hype for that shit because i was gonna live stream that shit man i was gonna do like we were gonna stream that shit and have it have like a fucking q and I was like oh man it's gonna be dope it's gonna be dope man i played that first stage and i said fuck this game and it's like I, I look at Battle for the Grid, and I'm like, it's it's a num, num, number one. It's it's a it's, it's a discount game. Let's get that out the way. Um, that shit better not be a, better not be more than twenty dollars. That's all I'm fucking saying. I mean, to me, from what I'm hearing, it might be I think like twenty thirty dollars or some shit like that. That shit be, again. That shit better not be above twenty dollars. I, I mean, if it, it is. I can just go play that damn mobile game for free. It's like. For the sake of the show, I'm 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 really thinking of just buying the game and taking one for the team. I was like, yeah, I took the last bullet. You take this one. I, I might take this bullet because everybody's like, it's like Marvel vs. Capcom. I'm looking at this. I'm like, mm, no, it ain't. Mm. Y'all seen JDF? JDF putting the mind whammy on y'all, and you stop it. 
I mean, so there might be a live stream of this and and a review at the same time. I don't know. I have to see. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's hard for me to really like, get pumped for for the game. And I, I just saw it, and I'm just like, why? This looks like Legacy Wars on 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 the console, and people were like, no, it's not like Legacy Wars, and I'm like. I'm like, it looks exactly like Legacy Wars. What are you talking about? Except Those are the same fucking character models. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just sitting there, just like, no, like you can't. You're not gonna dupe me with this, guys. Don't know. Like, and they say it's no. not a port. It's not a port. It's not a port. But it's like, I, I can't it's, help but feel it's an, this. It's an port. asset flip. Not a port, but it's a fucking asset flip. Yeah, it's, it's. it's and to me, it's like, how, is the game going to be quarter circle forward? Is it going to be this? Is it? Go- it's like, it just doesn't. It, it's just aesthetically, I'd rather play Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite because people could talk to shit about that game, but at least it was a fun game and visually kind of like pleasing to the eye in terms of a fighting game, right? And it's just this isn't cutting it for me because it just looks like a mobile game just on I can I can use an Xbox or a PlayStation controller. Yippee. I mean, if you told me this was a Switch game, I might cut it some fucking slack. But that's a stretch even then? Hell no. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't because I've seen the Switch run Bayonetta 2. Hell no. Mm-mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, be prepared, folks. I, I, I'll i probably take one for the... I, I'm definitely going to take one for the team and just buy this game and then it'll probably just be sitting on my shelf mocking me that I bought it. That's assuming <laughs> it gets a physical release. You're assuming, sir. I'm assuming that Saban probably paid money for that, but you're right, you know, because you know he probably thinks it's sucking. It's like, nope, I'm not paying the extra money for <laughs> the physical like, discs. Physical disc? They can just download the megabytes, and I still get the money. It's all good. <laughs> it's like I won either which way. <laughs> so here's my also awesome thing. Here's my thing too. So CJ, I think I saw like they said 25 characters. What the fuck is this roster looking like? So the digital collector's edition for the Nintendo Switch is thirty nine. Digital collector's edition, wow. thirty nine ninety nine for thirty nine ninety nine Prime. Ah. For, for, for what you get, digital game download, pre order bonus, Green Ranger version two skin, pre order bonus, digital art book, season one pass, Lord Dracon Evolution two, and the Pink Ranger skin. You, you you hear that sound, CJ? This is me washing my hands. <laughs> it's just like. Done. <laughs> I'm like that's that's all you had to they, say. They, Thank they, you for saving me money. They, Thank you, CJ. Ass buy the digital deluxe edition of this shit. Hell no. Thank you for saving me my money, <laughs> CJ. I appreciate that. Because I, I was in the back of my mind, I was like thinking, well, maybe I could get it. The Green Ranger version too. Oh, you mean that that web series shit? No, I'm good. Thank you. I appreciate you. I saw that and I was like, nigga, really, bruh, bruh, bruh. <laughs> so that's my question though. So. <laughs> I remember I saw something. I don't know if it was on Twitter or the website announcement, but I saw 25 slots. We already know Tyranno Ranger and Dragon Ranger are in. Look, I haven't played Legacy Wars in a minute, but I'm pretty sure it's all those characters, and they're going to fuck us over on some of the no, extra characters. No, because Legacy Wars got a pretty, uh, a pretty substantial roster size. Like, it's a whole lot of motherfuckers in that game. Hmm. Uh, I will say this. Outside of Lord Draken, if I see one Boom Comic Studio skin... I'm fighting somebody. Somebody, we... I'm taking some shit to the streets. There's gonna be some real-life fisticuffs. So, 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 and and this is... You might laugh, or you might... I don't know how you're gonna feel about this. So they interviewed the developers. This is very recent. This is, like, earlier today, actually. Um, So they addressed the whole thing of whether this is a port. And he was like, it was never going to be a port. We knew it was going to be a market confusion if we ever considered it. So it was definitely the business, the business decision and a development decision was made earlier on. So, yeah, they start, right. so they're starting everything from the ground up in terms of visuals, but the gameplay controls are actually back towards a more traditional fighter. So the person asked him, so full suite navigation. Yeah, I would say if you were compared to a title out there, Dragon Ball Z or Marvel vs. Capcom, that series, full control of everyone on your team. Three versus three. You can assist them in to do an assist attack, or you can actually do a full-on swap out to take control of those fighters. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm. Mm. I'm just saying, like, can, can I get a Dynasty Warriors Power Rangers? I've been saying this. This is like money in the bank here, guys. Like, it, it's it's right there. I think you even say it with the Bat Ride Wars games. Like, 
can can we get a Power Ranger game like that? I, I'm I'm just saying. I'm not asking much here. Like, why haven't we got a good game? Like last time I got fucking bamboozled was the 15th anniversary game, and yeah. That, that that was a sad day for me. Oh, you talking about the uh, Super Legends? Ooh, oh yeah, fuck that man. game. I was hyped, dude. Fuck I was that like, game. oh man, Super Legends, yeah. And then I bought and it. I'm mad like, you said oh, this shit because oh. as soon as you said, it, I looked over to my game case and it's like staring right at me, <laughs> staring at your soul. Like, why did you buy me Prime? Why? <laughs> well, because you were ten dollars at Toys R Us, you sad faced fuck. I feel sad. I paid twenty dollars for it. Oh my bro, what happened? <laughs> Ten dollars more than you. <laughs> I feel bad for you. I went to GameStop one day and I was like, I guess I'll pay twenty dollars for this. And I'm like, oh, ooh. ooh. I, got, I got through the game and then I was just like, I just quietly put it on my shelf and it's just staring at me like. Sadly, sadly, <laughs> that fucking um Megaforce game that's on 3ds is way better. I haven't played the Super Megaforce one, so I can't comment on that one. Is it like simple controls or something like that? Or is it just yeah? Kind of- like it's just it's just the better. Compared to Super Legends, it's a betterly designed game overall. I mean, it's a handheld. You can't really fuck that up per se. Yeah. Oh, what did you get Super Legends on? I got Super Legends on... Uh, PS2. Yeah, I got it on DS. Yeah, I bet not. Yeah, I got I, it on PS2, and I was just like, what in the basic nonsense is this? What in the basic nonsense? You know, after that fucking Donald Thunder game, I said, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> the fact that you waited that long... I just remember coming out of the Genesis era not being satisfied with Power Rangers games. I'm dead serious. Like I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. We had some we had some bangers I in mean, the day. I mean, I mean, the Sega like, CD I, one, I ain't going to lie. Like The Sega CD one, even though it was just basically press a button in a direction, the game, I was fine with it because, you know, I'm yeah. a Power Ranger fan. Was, yeah, I didn't play that one. I didn't play that one, but I did play the fighting edition on Super Nintendo. That shit was dope. No, that's what I'm saying. Coming out of that era, I include the Super Nintendo. That was it. Coming out the Genesis and Super Nintendo era, that, like, past that, it was like, eh. I, was never, I was never satisfied with Power Ranger games. I just remember. I think the next closest we got that was decent was the Lightspeed Rescue game on PlayStation 1. Yeah, even though, like. PlayStation graphics have not aged well at all, so... It, yes, what? No. Yeah, it hasn't. I mean, it, so it's like... You look back at Lightspeed Rescue, it was like... You forget, too, that, you know, PlayStation 1 was kind of, like, on its downturn when that Lightspeed game came out, so it was like, uh, yeah, ps is coming out, guys, so have fun with this. And then they had the audacity to release a Time Force game on PS1. But apparently, um, this... this uh, Battle for the Grid is cross-play, except for Sony, because they're still trying to figure that shit out, whatever. Sure, um, Sony, sure. But let's be real about this. Do you, do you really expect to be a lot of cross-play for this game? I I, I mean... Yeah, look, I'm not trying to shit on the fucking... Me neither, I'm not, trying, it's just, it's, I'm not trying to speak ill of them, but I'm just, I'm just commenting on what I'm seeing, and I'm saying it's like, I'm not going to see this at Evo anytime soon. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, look, if I play it, and it's just like, it's pretty basic... I'm not mad. It's just, eh, eh. <laughs> I mean, so I, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm I, just, I'm just, yeah. I feel you. Your feelings you're feeling right now. I want you to know you're not alone. <laughs> yeah. I hear you, and what you're saying is valid. Yeah, it, it, yeah. So it's it's fifteen. They say it's gonna be fifteen fighters in the initial batch. And then just, with that bullshit. And just so, the aspect I saw season one, and I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Uh, no. <laughs> don't tell me you're going to season past this. Please don't do this. So I'm saying, okay, so 15 initially. So uh, green, red. Mm-hmm. Do you think, do you think they're going to put all six Mighty Morphin on so, roster one? So, so it's 19. Okay, so Prime. So it's 1999. $3.99 for the fucking digital deluxe version on a Nintendo Switch. So it is under 20, I guess, for it. Okay. I mean... You know, because the real version of the game was $40. That digital deluxe, that's the actual game. That's the real game. Well, I mean, if you're... That's, re- that's the one they want you to buy. If we're going to put a guess here, I guess we're going to guess, because 15... God, God, 15 characters, really? Like... So that's what I'm saying. Do you think they put all six Mighty Morphin in? They, they should not. They you know shouldn't. They, you, know so, they will. you know they will. So we want equal distribution. So well, I'm we already gonna... know the Green Rangers. Well, we already got the Green Ranger. Yeah, so Green and Red are in. I'm um, gonna assume. I'm gonna assume Pink Mighty Morphin is in. I'm gonna go with um, 
Golzio Ranger. Uh, and, I, and, and it just think practically, like I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not thinking about characters I want in the game. No, no, no. I'm thinking I'm about thinking, the characters I know they would, they would I, put I, in the game. I'm thinking semi practically here. I would say Golzio Ranger or Zeo Ranger Red. Um, maybe Phantom Ranger, because that's kind of a wild card pick. If you're going to go Turbo, um, uh, what's the dude? Maybe a Psycho Ranger. I just want to say I'm pretty sure Psycho Red is a guarantee. Yeah. Um. Um. I want to say, and I want to say that maybe Lord Zed Godar. Uh, Red Super Mega Force, maybe. Possibly. Maybe the Magna Defender because of the comic book. Yeah. Um. So in that case, then also maybe the Green Samurai Ranger. Which Dino Charge Ranger are you going to put in this? Do you think I'm going to? Put- I'm going to say Black. And the only reason why I say black is because you can do a story mode thing with green Tommy and black Tommy. Okay. Okay. Uh, and if and if not and if not black, then maybe uh, blue or white because just it's not going to be a whole bunch of red rangers in this game. They yeah. shouldn't put a bunch of rangers in this game. <laughs> you like to think. Um, you would. You no, know, right? You would think. Uh. Man, this is tough because they might just shim sham you and shit on this. Uh, probably Jen from Time Force. I was yeah, the most definitely. No, she is definitely in. Yeah, she she definitely in. Um, and if she's definitely in. I'm pretty sure uh, Lauren is in. Most definitely. Yeah, I will say Andros because it's Andros. maybe not. Yeah, maybe not Andros because like I or said, I'm pretty Zane. sure they're not gonna put. Or maybe Ashley because I'm thinking they're not gonna they're not gonna put in the Red Rangers. You need and some I women also, in there, so you yeah, can. you also need some women. You need also you need you need an equal distribution of colors and gender ratio. Dana from Lightspeed. If not, you know what? I don't see. I don't see Dana. I see Ryan before I see Dana. Okay. Uh, because oh, of his oh. because of his significance, you know what I mean. Tori from uh, Ninja Storm. If not Tori from Ninja Storm, also I think Kira. Now, not if if not Down of Thunder Black is probably gonna be Down of Thunder Yellow. Yeah, one of those two. Uh, which of the Misty Force do you think will be in there? In most, the most likely, world. most likely. In a perfect world. It would be the White Ranger, but I think it's going to be Korag. Okay. Uh, Operation Overdrive. That's going to be tricky. Tizon. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jungle Fury. Huh. Um, RJ. I would say RJ. Yeah, RJ on that one. RPM. Mm, one of the sil- silver or gold. Or maybe black, because again, I'm still thinking about color distribution. Yeah, yeah. Um, samurai, either Lauren. Yeah, Lauren. it's gonna be Lauren. It's gotta be Lauren. either Lauren, either Lauren or Antonio. Yeah, one of those two. I think we already did Mega Force, Super Mega Force. I don't know. They gotta get one Mega Force, so maybe Robo Knight. Oh, Robo Knight. Yeah. Uh, you think maybe? Well, I don't know. They ain't gonna put Ninja Steel on that shit. Most dead. It's probably going to be the Ninja Steel Red. Yeah. That's um, if. He's probably going to be in season two. Yeah, so. I, <sighs> yeah, I, I'm not. 1999. They really going to get my damn $20, aren't they? You let me know how that goes, homie. All right. Uh, that'll, that'll, I, I will definitely let you know because this, 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 this game drops when? Uh, coming April 2019. Oof. Man. Yeah. So it's plenty of time for them to. To reveal fighters. And you know what? I tell you what. Depending on who they reveal and depending on who they lock behind paywall. So here's my thing. All right. So if the Shadow Ranger is in the game standard, I might get it. But if he's <laughs> locked behind a season pass paywall, they can lick my nuts. Okay. That's that's my that's my barometer. That's how I'm judging it. Yeah. Stay tuned, folks. Yeah. So I mean, I had to put that in there because it was just that legacy battle for the grid shit was kind of on my mind. I was like, nope, I'm not waiting for another show. Nope, gotta do it now. Mm-mm. So yeah, because I totally would have fucking forgot. Yeah. So, but anyways, folks, uh, that's that's it for this. Uh, I think next time around we're definitely going to be back on the uh, commentaries and stuff. Uh, trying so to what's up next, sir? Hmm. See, I'm curious on whether we should jump into Green Candle. Hmm. 
You know what? I say wait. Let's do a couple more episodes of the right. good times with Tommy. All right, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. We do we do the good times with Tommy before we lead into Green Candle. So I, was Island of Illusion before or after Green Candle? Uh, I thought Island of Illusion. Island of Illusion. Hold on, let me look at this real quick. Live, live look up. Uh, Island. Oh, of, we're professional folks. Island of Illusion. Power Rangers. That is. Island of Illusions Part 2, Episode 29. It sounds like that... Yeah, that was before the Green Candle, I believe. That's what it looks like. It says Episode 29, so hold up. Let me see. Where in the world? Hold up. Why don't I just type in PR and just look up the damn episodes on Wikipedia? That would probably be better. Season 1... Island of Illusion, Green of Evil, da 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 da. Ah, yeah, it is. So, yeah, Island of Illusion is before it. It's basically after Gung Ho. So, yeah, Island, yeah, Island of Illusion is part one and two. Then you got the rock star, Calamity Kennedy, A Star is Born, and The Yoke's on You. That's an, that is an interesting match there, sir. Yeah. So, honestly, yeah, that, that would definitely be a good. Good, good, uh, group of episodes. <laughs> Island of Illusion. Hmm. Yeah. So, but anyways, yeah, that, 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 just be on the lookout for that commentary, folks. We'll definitely do that. Now, do we finally tame the beast that is uh, Ninja Steel? Finally, just to kind of. <sighs> that would require me having to watch Ninja Steel, wouldn't it? Just, just to get it over with, with, with uh, Beast Morphers coming out soon. Might as well. Yeah, I guess we probably should. So I guess I have to. Yeah, I. Uh, you know, it's on Netflix, isn't it? It's on Netflix. Yeah, it should, yeah. Be, should be. On, should be on Netflix. Should be. I mean. Okay. So, but yeah, that that is it, folks. So we will catch you on the flip side. Peace out. Ad vidas in.